What is up, everyone? Rady J from Cynical Gaming's here, and uh, we're gonna be continuing this. And oh my God, it's been such a long road, but we're going to trial, I believe now, and we're gonna finally finish this case. Hopefully, like I said, it's been a long, long run, and oh my God, has. Have I been frustrated with this? So hopefully, hopefully we can do good and move on to the second game because again, this is the last trial of the first game, and this is super loud in my ears. So let me lower that so I can concentrate. But anyway, let's continue. As you can see, I uh, I save a lot, so. Okay, let's load it up and do our thing, people. Hell yeah. February 25th, 9.47 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. This is the Defendant Lobby, alright, but there's no Defendant. I've been trying to reach Lana all morning. Where could she be? And where's Emma for that? Hey, boo. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. Something's been happening behind the scenes. Oh. Edgeworth! Knowing you, you've already figured it out. Who the owner of the lucky number 7 ID number is, that is. Well, I have a pretty strong hunch. Oh yeah, it's definitely him. Looks like I'm not the only one who's figured it out. You know, the only reason this trial didn't reach a verdict yesterday is because there was still room for doubt regarding this ID record. If that number does belong to whom you suspect, then no doubt will remain. After all, he hasn't been officially charged with anything. True, not yet. In any case, in any event, once all doubt has been removed from that list, I can call for a ruling. Five minutes, right? And Chief Prosecutor Skye will be found guilty. But she didn't do it. I figured you'd say as much. That's why I came here. To hear what you have to say. Edgeworth is actually going to be working with us again, and I think it's closely this time. 10 to 1, he's going to be our bailout in this case. This is the first time he's ever done something like this. Lana's hiding something, and the only way we'll ever know the truth is to draw it out of her. The truth? Everything goes back to the SL9 incident. Don't be stupid. Today is the last day of the trial. But we don't have time to reminisce about the past. And that depends on you. If she's found guilty, you'll lose your only chance to find out what really happened. I'll think about it. See you in court, right? Yeah, right through that door, man. Well, we're gonna see you there, and we're going to defend our defendant... Uh, ...diligently? <laughs> this is it. If I'm ever going to find out what Chief Gant has on her, it's now. Oh, here we go. February 25th, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number nine. Oh, this this is gonna be a long battle. I can freaking feel it in my nuggets. Come on, Edgy, help, damn it. Right? We need him to help. We really do. Court is now in session. The trial for Miss Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Normally, this is when prosecution puts forth its opening statement. But before that, the police chief has a proposal to make. Oh, does he? Chief Gant. Morning, folks! How's everyone doing? 
Hey, Edgy. Yeah, been back to the pool all late? No, yet? No, I've been drowning enough as it is at my work. Oh, that's a good one. I don't think I can top that. If you don't mind me asking, Chief, exactly what is this proposal of yours? Whew. Lada, that is to say, the defendant, has asked me if she could speak directly to the court. She wants to do what? Having heard what she intends to say, I feel she should be granted her request. Thank you for the host, Boo. In the end, it should save everyone a lot of time and trouble. What's this all about, Defendant? I'd just like to make one simple request and I'll be finished. Well then, what's your request? Your Honor, I'd like you to put an immediate end to this trial. Huh? I confess to all charges against me. On February 21st of this year, I murdered Detective Bruce Goodman. In the underground parking lot of the prosecutor's office. I, I really dislike that man, too. I thought he was really cool when he first showed up, but... No. No, Lana! <coughs> you can't. Your Honor, the defendant's claim does not change the defendant's plea. In that case, Mr. Wright... I no longer require your services. But Lana! Your Honor, I hereby forfeit my right to an attorney- Oh, fucking hell! The prosecution may lack direct evidence against me, but it has significantly proven its case through testimony and circumstantial evidence. I would like you to render your verdict now, if you please. Hmm. Huh. Well, the defendant certainly has the right to self-representation. Her request is legally valid, although this is an unprecedented situation. Indeed, it appears there is no further need to continue this trial. Even if Mr. Wright may feel otherwise. This can't be happening. It appears this time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant... Oh, come on, Edgy. Oh, he did it. He did Yes! One moment, Your Honor. Mr. Edgeworth. Well, the prosecution has not yet proven the defendant guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Any ruling at this stage would certainly be premature. Come now, Worthy. I understand this is a difficult time for you. But why don't you just be a good little boy and keep your mouth shut, hmm? Hmm. I don't think I care for your tone, Chief Grunt. What? Creating another fabrication to cover up your past mistakes. Sorry, but I'm no longer the naive little boy you would have me be. God damn, Edgy! With this situation, con with this sudden confession from the defendant, it's obvious to me some kind of deal was struck behind the scenes. Some kind of deal? Hmm. Not everyone operates as you do, Worthy. Hmm. I thought so. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to change its first witness. Oh, to whom? As its first witness, the prosecution would like to call... Miss Emma Skye. I request the court hears her testimony. We're calling Emma. Mr. Edgeworth, I am exercising my right to self-representation. I don't think we need to continue... I don't care what you think, Miss Skye. 
The exposure of truth sometimes results in tragedy. However, no matter how tragic the truth may be, it would be an even greater tragedy to avert one's eyes from it. Oh, Edgy's awesome! Very well. The court shall grant the pros prosecution's request. Ah, that's okay with you, right, Chief Gant? Worthy, you'll live to regret this. Mark my words. Hmm, Miss Emma Sky, please take the stand. Looks like Edgeworth has decided to take the horse by the reins. Oh, Edgy's gonna save our ass! Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Um, my my name is Emma, Emma Sky. My occupation, I'm Lana's little sister, and I want to be a scientific investigator. Two years ago, you encountered the serial killer Joe Dark from the Joe Dark killings. Is this correct? Yes. I'm trying my hardest to forget about that, though. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to recall those events one more time. Mr. Edgeworth, please remember this trial concerns the murder of Detective Goodman. Is an incident that was resolved two years ago really all that relevant? Yes, it most certainly is. Well, okay. He sure gave in fast. No. Please testify about what happened to you two years ago. The trip to yesteryear has finally begun. It's bound to lead to the truth behind this trial. Oh, it's getting good, people. It's getting good. I can't wait. I was waiting in my sister's office that day. A man came running in and took me hostage. Neil Marshall rescued me. But I'll never forget what I saw in that instant. The man raised up his knife and, and stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest. <laughs> it's a good thing you weren't harmed. I passed out. I don't remember much. That's understandable. However, please tell me, Mr. Edgeworth. What does this testimony have to do with Detective Goodman's murder? That will soon become apparent, Your Honor. You've got to admire him for his courage, considering he has no evidence. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. I don't know where this voice is coming from, but it's sticking. <laughs> I was waiting in my sister's office that day. Let's press everything and see what we could do here first. Two years ago, the defendant was a detective at the police department, correct? Y yes, she was second in command under the deputy chief of police camp. My sister, she was the best detective ever. Yes, I remember. Deputy Chief Gatt and Miss Sky used to be quite the pair. Well, I believe they shared the same office. That's right. I'd always sit at my sister's desk and dream about playing that organ. I wanted to play it that day too. The police department and the prosecution's o prosecutor's office held a ceremony that day. Lana promised to take me to dinner after she finished her work. A man came running in and took me hostage. A man? Yes, Joe Dark. He was a, a serial killer. Joe, Joe Dark was brought in for questioning on the day of that ceremony. We were desperate to get anything on him that would lead to an arrest. Oh, when he saw his chance, he fled the room, right? 
Upon fleeing the room, Doc proceeded to take the elevator. He must have been in a panic because the elevator was going up. Then he ran into Sky in Gant's office. Th there was a lot of noise coming from outside, so I opened up the door to have a look. That's when I saw him. Neil Marshall rescued me. What was the prosecutor doing there? That day, there were two people present during Doc's questioning. Deputy Chief Deming Grant and Profes uh, Prosecutor Neil Marshall. T. Cahoon! What's up, girl? How you doing? Almost forgot about Gant. Neil Marshall had just received the King of Prosecutors Award. Young and dedicated, he went straight to questioning r the questioning room after the ceremony. I assume that would also be why he was first to run after Doc. What's up, King Snips? How you doing? Welcome to the stream, everyone. When Doc grabbed me, I, I thought I was as good as dead. And that's when Prosecutor Marshall came running in. I... I don't clearly remember what happened then, but... But I'll never forget what I saw in that instant. Can you tell us about that? Mr. Marshall jumped on dark, just then the lights went out. I'm doing pretty good, man. Hopefully getting uh, the rest of this case done because it's been frustrating as hell. Libby could tell you how much we've been, like, pondering everything about this, and, uh, it's been taking quite a while. I think I'm on, like, maybe my fifth stream of this case? The lights! It was just about this time of year. There was a terrible storm going on, and lightning struck nearby. So the electricity went out. Wait a minute! If it was pitch dark in the room, you shouldn't have been able to see anything, right? Right, but just then lightning flashed again outside. How convenient. That sudden flash left an unforgettable image in the scene of my mind. I see. <clears throat> I told the detective about what I saw then. The detective? Yes, Detective Goodman. He was in charge of the case. Detective Bruce Goodman, the victim. Yeah, um... In this game, you play as Phoenix, the guy on screen now that's being covered up by the options. And, uh, you pretty much do investigating while you're out of court for your case. And then you're, you're the defense attorney and you're trying to get these people from getting the guilty plea. What's up, Shion, hun? How you doing? Welcome to the stream. You get to see me go crazy again over this damn case. Yeah. So you spoke with Detective Goodman about this two years ago. Yes. Uh, that's, that's what's so scary about this trial. And you told Detective Goodman about what you saw? Yes, but... At the time, the, the words just wouldn't come out. That's why I drew a picture. A picture? Yes, I think she mentioned that before. It, it is a badass game. I have been having a lot of fun with it. <clears throat> this is actually the, uh, the Phoenix Wright HD um, edition. It just came out on the PS4 not too long ago. And it has the first three games. This is actually the final case of the first game. And it's, it's a doozy, let me tell you. <laughs> a picture, yes, I think she mentioned that before. Wow, Mr. Wright, have you heard enough? Oh, no, I'm gonna ask about the picture. This picture, the witness drew. I believe it has a very important meaning. But the list of evidence I was given two years ago didn't contain a picture. 
Witness, would you mind if we added this statement to your testimony? Y yes your honor. I drew a picture of that scene once, but it seems to have been lost. It, it's not lost. We actually have it. If if we go ahead and look back here, we have the picture. Now, I'm gonna do this just to be safe and not get my ass killed. But I'm going to actually present it and see what happens. There we go. The music changed. Well, stopped. Mr. Edgeworth, this little girl put all her heart into drawing that picture. I got you on lurk, bro. Enjoy your stream. Gaming, I'll keep you uh, on tab, but thanks, King Man. I really appreciate it, dude. Thank you so much. And yet, you would insist on denying its existence? Huh? Hey, I am not the bad guy here. All I'm saying is that as a prosecutor for that case, I wasn't handed such a picture. That well, that may well be. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Behold! This is the evidence list for the SO9 incident. Please turn it over, Your Honor. Thank you again, King. Turn it over. Turn it. Ah, what's this? It's a picture. Yes, what's. What is that? Hey, that's it. That's the picture I drew. Indeed, two men appear to be wrestling here. What's the meaning of this? What are you doing with that list? Me? Only the prosecutor in charge should have access to that list. Ah. These lists, they're, they're different from each other. What? It would appear, Mr. Edgeworth, that the evidence list you were handed two years ago was incomplete. These two lists fit together to form one. You can see the marks here where they were torn apart from each other. So you see, Mr. Edgeworth, it's quite obvious what happened. Two years ago, only half of the evidence that case ever reached you. How convenient to be on the back of the list, right? It is really convenient. What, what gets me is, why was the chief hiding that list for two years? Order! Order! But, Miss Skye, why did you draw that picture on the back of such an important list? Because that's what Detective Goodman handed me in the questioning room, Your Honor. <coughs> Wait a minute. If this list was torn in half, then that means... Your Honor. Are you all right, Mr. Wright? Your eyes are bulging from your head. If the evidence list was torn in half, there might be more of the drawing on the back of Mr. Edwards' list, and why hasn't he ever turned it over in the past two years? Yes, that's quite conceivable, Mr. Edgeworth. That's possible. Let's see. Uh, uh. Uh, something wrong. D do you even have to ask? <laughs> Sorry, Your Honor. There is indeed something drawn on the back of my list. It's that... that thing. Because he's in on it. Edgeworth isn't in on it. Edgeworth is fine. He's actually been more screwed over than most people in this case. That, that, that's that thing. That, that thing that was dancing in the evidence room. Clearly, this act of vandalism is the work of a certain chief of detectives. I, I guess he was out of scrap paper. 
evidence list restored and updated in the court <laughs> court record. Whoa! Good man, knew it was going to reach Edgy, but didn't know Assface was going to prevent it. Yeah, true. I can't get covered up so much in that case two years ago. It, it's ridiculous. Very well, the witness. <clears throat> Will you please testify about this picture you drew two years ago? Huh? Oh, y yes, yes, sir, your honor. What's wrong with Emma? <coughs> she seemed to be thinking about something when she was looking at that picture. Well, I'm pretty damn sure she was thinking about how she created the blue badger. Emma's picture. Th this is the picture I drew two years ago. The flash of lightning was so bright, all I could see were shadows. After that, I must have fainted. This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. So she couldn't really see who was trying to stab who. For all we know, the prosecutor could have been the one standing up. And Dark was on the ground. To think a flash of lightning could burn such an image in your mind. Thanks to that though, she was able to show us exactly what she saw. Well, I don't see any contradictions here. This clearly shows Joe Dark about to murder Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Maybe, maybe. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. Oh, God. Emma's picture. Let's find out more about the picture, guys. This is the picture I drew two years ago. Did you draw this picture right after the incident? Um, I think I drew it two or three days later. At, at first, I was in such a state of shock that I couldn't do anything. There's two knives and a pick. Was there? All I'm seeing is one knife, really. Huh. Well, we'll find out, so... At first, I was in such a state of shock that I couldn't do anything. During that time, investigation team was organized. Detective Goodman was placed in charge. Under the direction of Damon Gant and Alana Skye. The other hand. The other hand? The one by his, uh, shoulder? Do you think? Maybe. Hmm. Two or three days later. The memory should still have been fresh in her mind. Uh, excuse me, witness. But you, can you please tell us why this picture is painted all black? The guy on the floor, look at his hand. The flash of lightning was so bright all I could see were shadows. So at the time, you didn't even know it was Mr. Marshall who had come to your rescue. No, I couldn't see him clearly. The lightning was so bright, and I was knocked to the floor. You were knocked to the floor? Dark had a tight grip on me, but when Mr. Marshall jumped on him, I was knocked away. I, I turned around, and that's when the lightning flashed. Poor Emma. I'm just glad she wasn't hurt. I don't... I don't hear it. We'll take another look at it. But... You're talking about the guy on the floor, right? 
Which hand would it be in? Dika Hood chilling up. Uh, would it? What was it on the floor or? Is I'm not seeing it. Yes, that one right there looks sideways. Okay, maybe, maybe. But we're definitely gonna find out. I can tell you that much. Hopefully. What happened after the lightning flashed? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't see it. After that, I must have fainted. You mean you didn't see the actual murder take place? No, I, I'm sorry. Objection! The flash of lightning only drove off the darkness for a split second. Not only that, but the tremor of the situation understandably caused the witness to faint. I, I'm not saying you're crazy, boo. D don't, don't, you know, don't. Look, don't go all taco ninja on me, okay? Allow you. Do you really need to torture this girl any further? What? Hey, I'm not the bad guy here. Anyway, this picture. This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. Sorry for asking so many times, but are you sure you drew exactly what you saw? Of course! This is the exact scene! It wasn't influenced in any way from your talks with the detectives. Are you insinuating we somehow manipulated her memory, Mr. Wright? No, no, of course not. I better watch out or he might find some way to cut my salary. I drew this picture before I heard anything from the detectives. So I don't think anyone's story would have influenced me. Mr. Wright, is there something that's bothering you about this picture? Huh? Oh, well... That's strange. She claims this is exactly the scene that was imprinted in her mind. And yet... There's clearly a contradiction here. This is the picture I drew t Okay, let's go back to that part. I'ma save again, because we're not failing this. <laughs> and I'm gonna try to go through the evidence. Let's see what we have. Stabbed in the back, died from a punctured heart and lung. A knife tip was found in a wound. Stabbing at the... Alright, that's not gonna help me at all. That's not gonna help me. It had to be something... Oh, what can it be? Um... I don't know, in this picture, does it look like he's about to get stabbed in the back or the chest? <sighs> stabbed in the back, died from a punctured heart and lung. A knife tip was found in the womb. Bring up the pick. Alright, the pick's up now. What do you think, Shion? How do you think we should go about it? I, I can't turn it. This is the only way I it could be seen right now. Do you, do you think it's going for his back?
there, there's definitely something up with that. And honestly, the way the knife is drawn, it looks super big. And it doesn't have a tip. At least to me, anyway. I mean... It'd definitely be something different. After that, I must have fainted. Okay. I want to try to present this. The music didn't stop. I did it wrong. That's fine. We have the one save. That was our first strike. Oh, it has to be something. Wait, why would the blue badger... Oh... The witness state... Mm. Yeah, the blue badger thing didn't work. I don't know. We're, I'm guessing we're just gonna fumble our way through this one. Like I said, I did ha I did save it, so we're definitely not gonna have to start over if we do. But there's definitely something. Deceased date and time of death: February 19th, between 7 and 7:30. Cause of death: stab wound, piercing heart, and lung. Looks like he stuck behind and was caught. Stuck behind and was caught. Hmm. Died from blood loss in under 10 minutes. Weapon found in the wound was missing tip. <sighs> this doesn't show anything, so I don't think... What's up, crazy? Welcome to the uh, stream. Uh, as always, you come in when I'm super confused. Like, I just don't know where to go. Just going all around and shit. <laughs> like, I got his neck. Like, it got his neck. It didn't say it got his neck. It, um, he was definitely stabbed in the back. Oh, good, man. Eat your grub. <laughs> We're just gonna fumble through and see what... I'm not sure if it clearly contradicts. No, it doesn't. If anything, I have, uh... Shit. We're just gonna fumble through it and see what we do. <sighs> oh, I'm glad that super loads super fast. What the hell do we do? It's this is this this. Okay, got that one. 
I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this picture, the witness drew, contains a blatant contradiction. What? But, but I still remember it just like it was yesterday. Mr. Wright. Perhaps it would be faster if you simply pointed out the contradiction for us. What part of this picture contradicts the autopsy report? Oh, Lord. I want to say it's this because it doesn't have a tip. The tip, it looks like it's already broken off. And this looks too big. So, I'm going to mm, present there. The contradiction, of course, lies here. Take a look at the knife the man is holding. If you look closely, you can see its tip is already broken. See, it didn't have a tip in the picture. Even I don't have to look closely to see that, Mr. Wright. But, but Mr. Wright, look at the evidence. See the murder weapon. Its tip is broken too. If I recall, the tip of the knife was found broken in the victim's body. It was the conclusive piece of the evidence that proved Joe Dark was the murderer. I'm afraid that it's not so simple, Emma. And where, pray tell, could you possibly see the problem? It's obvious, really. The victim suffered a single stab wound to the back. If the victim was already stabbed once, then the murder weapon should not be broken. Ah! What's the meaning of this? Perhaps the knife was broken beforehand. Sorry, but I'm afraid that's not possible. The tip of the knife was found inside the victim's body. If it was broken beforehand, it couldn't possibly wind up there. That's right! But what does it mean? The tip of the knife was undeniably discovered within the victim's body. The only possible explanation for the witness's memory is mistaken. That's why I asked her so many times if she was sure she remembered correctly. I believe you were annoyed at the time. But she was sure she remembered correctly. But there's no other way to explain this inconsistency. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. There was another explanation. Have you forgotten already? about a little something called falsified evidence. You're treading on thin ice, right? All I'm saying is that this broken knife tip might be the piece of evidence that was forged. You can't deny the possibility. No. Uh, that was the laziest scream I could ever do. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. Order! Order! Are you saying the investigation really was corrupted? Your Honor, please allow me to once again go over the events that took place the day of the murder. The police department and the prosecutor's office were holding a ceremony that day. After receiving the King of Prosecutors award at the ceremony, Neil Marshall questioned Joe Dark along with Damon Grant. During his questioning, Joe Dark fled the room. Prosecutor Marshall chased after him and was killed by Dark. It is my belief that somewhere in this story, there is a lie. Ah. I... I'm not lying. The man really was holding up a broken knife. If that's true, then there's no other way around it. This could not have been the actual murder weapon. 
There must have been another broken knife. What are the chances of there being two broken knives? Another broken knife besides Joe Darks. Could there have been one? Oh, there is another one. There has to be another one. What if the witness is this adamant about the accuracy of what she saw? It can't just be explained away by a simple observational error. But Mr. Wright! In that instant, Emma really did see a broken knife. I assume, then, that you have some information about this other broken knife. If so, please feel free to enlighten us. Save time, people! <laughs> he is waiting! Fuck it up again! The murder weapon was already broken prior to the murder. There's only one way. Take a look at this. Here's the real murder weapon. The answer lies in the past. Two years in the past. Right here inside this picture. The King of Prosecutors Award. Do you think that's why Gant had the knife taken off the award? Because if you recall, Edgeworth had just received the award and there was no knife on it. It was just the shield. This picture of the ceremony awards. What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? It's the... The broken murder weapon! Notice the award Prosecutor Marshall was holding. It's... A broken knife! As we earlier concluded... Concluded... <clears throat> the knife in the drawing was not Joe Dark's knife. That being the case... The knife the witness was saw was in all likelihood from this award. Yeah, Sheon, your brain's not the only one that's melting, believe me. This guy here is going freaking crazy. Order, order, order! Neil Marshall was awarded King of Prosecutors that day. As an award, he was given this broken shield and knife. When he chased after Joe Dark, he pulled out this knife. Being a prosecutor, he did not carry a pistol. This broken knife was the only weapon he had in this dangerous situation. But that... that can't be. Oh, and why not, Mr. Edgeworth? Because if the King of Prosecutors award knife was the murder weapon, then the murderer and the victim would have been reversed just like I said. It was... it was the prosecutor that was standing over Joe Dark. What do you mean? I mean... This man raising a knife w would have been Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Oh, oh! <laughs> oh! No, no! But the prosecutor was the one who actually died! That's true. W what's going on here? It seems Mr. Wright has been a bit too eager to jump to conclusions. Wait, wait I, I remember now. I remember everything. Witness, M Mr. Edgeworth. What is it? Could you show me your evidence list again, please? His list. The one with that picture scribbled on it. Oh, here we go about the blue badger. I knew it! This picture! I'm the one who drew it! What? You drew that? That's right! The, the list wasn't torn in half at the time I drew this picture! Oh, God, she made the blue badger. She's a horrible person. Ugh. All 
all this time, I I've been trying to so hard to forget. I must have locked this part away deep inside me. Uh, perhaps it would be best if we added this to the witness's testimony. Oh, would you please tell us what you've recalled, Miss Guy? Y yes, Your Honor. First the knife mix-up, and now the blue badger. This should be interesting. <laughs> what, what, what? Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, I'm with Sheon. I'm with you, girl. Don't worry, I'm with you. Sweetie, I don't know if you were still here. I cannot pronounce your name, but thank you so much for the follow. You are amazing. I may have just called a man a sweetie, but, you know, get, but whatever, no homo. Yeah. Oh, when I saw that man raise his knife, I panicked and rushed toward both of them. I, I think I, I knocked away the man with the knife. Just then, there was another flash of lightning, and that's when I saw the blue badger. He wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I saw his shadow. Oh, we're gonna find out what the blue badger was. Oh, this is horrible. This is certainly the most unusual. Objection. Try impossible. The chief of detectives hadn't even designed him until this year. That would mean he didn't even exist two years ago. As well, the defense may now cry. Stop! Please, don't pursue this any further. Lana! What is the meaning of this? Please remain seated in the defendant's chair. But you can't do this. I've already confessed to the crime. Why can't you just leave it at that? Chief Prosecutor Sky. We've already come this far. It's too late to turn back. It damn right it's too late to turn back. Silence! The defense will now begin its cross-examination. Bailiff, please detain the defendant. She's being detained. She fucked up. It seems we're finally getting to the core of the matter. I'm hoping we are. I mean, damn. Emma's regulation. When I saw that man raise his knife, I panicked and rushed toward both of them. I, I think I, I knocked away the man with the knife. Just then there was another flash of lightning and I saw the blue badger. Ah, oh, I want a pack. Oh, we on to something. Panic, panic, she's panicking! Yes, she is! Yes, she is! She's afraid that we're gonna call her out on her lies. Uh, are you sure about this? Of course. See, I even drew a picture of him there. Of him there. Here. Here. Yeah, here. It's here, not there. Here. <laughs> but... It was the chief of detectives who thought up this hideous beast. And that was just this year. The blue badger didn't exist two years ago. This is all quite verifiable. I know it sounds strange. I, I was surprised too when I saw him at the police department. I had this nagging feeling that I had seen him somewhere before. Now I finally remember. Oh. Brother, just when you thought that thing had caused enough commotion. Uh, tell us where in the room did you see him dancing? He wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I saw his shadow. His shadow? So you mean you didn't actually see his face with its winning smile and all? That's not a winning smile, man. Uh, that's right, but, but I still remember it. He had three creepy horns. Objection. This is pointless. That thing couldn't have possibly existed two years ago. The witness must be mistaken. Objection. 
That well, that may well be. But what's important is what caused her to think she saw what she did. Oh, and I suppose you have an explanation. If so, then by all means, please tell us what this shadow really is. What was it Emma saw when that lightning flashed? Who is the blue badger really? We're going to save people! Why? Because I don't want to start over. The blue badger hadn't even been dreamt up by up when Emma drew this picture. Yet she's certain she saw it. Uh, saw it. Sha okay, out of the evidence that all of you guys have seen so far, what do you think she's seen, or think she's seen that could have been the blue badger? Ladies and gentlemen. It is the defense's belief that on the fa on that fatal day two years ago, there indeed was something that looks similar to the blue badger. Something that is now sitting in this very room. Oh, Lord. M Mr. Wright! In this room? Very well, Mr. Wright. What is it that the witness saw in that instant? Please, show us this mysterious blue badger look-alike. Oh, what could it be? The vase? You think it's the vase? I mean... Does that really look like the blue badger, though? Maybe... Maybe it fell or something? Like... Well, that's the only item you have that might fit. Alright, well, we'll present it and see. Oh god, I hope you're right. The mysterious blue badger was in fact this. But that's, uh, what exactly is that? I believe it's some sort of jar. But Mr. Wright, that doesn't look anything like the Blue Badger. Indeed it doesn't. As it stands now, it's just a plain jar. However, what if we were to change our viewpoint? Our viewpoint? Oh, I didn't even bother doing his voice. I've got to show them. I mean, we could rotate it. Oh, it's got the three things back there. You think... This? Maybe... No, because those horns would be down too far, right? Huh. Could that be it? Right here. Before I press present, does this look like the blue badger? Oh, I'm, I'm waiting for a comment. Maybe, maybe? The other way. Oh, Sheon says maybe, and you say the other way. Oh, you guys should rock, paper, scissor for this shit. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna present it. This isn't right. I've got to make it look more like... Oh, God. Objection. Allow me to remind the defense its case hinges on the witness's drawing. If Mr. Wright can't match the shape of the witness's draw... Okay, well... Fine! Oh, 
Like this? Let's try it like this. This isn't right. I've got to make it look more like the blue bat. Oh, god damn it. Oh, come on. Oh, this is good. This is gonna kill me. Oh, we'll get it, people. I swear. I swear. Yeah, well, is this a miracle or what? Yes! No one could possibly deny this jar's resemblance to the blue badger. No. It can't be. Oh, it can be, Eddie. It can be. Order! Order! The defense has proven its claim. The mysterious blue badger witnessed on the day of the crime was actually this. Objection. Although we all enjoyed Mr. Wright's dramatic performance, one question remains. What's your point? What do you mean? So that badger thing was actually just a jar. That doesn't change anything. Oh, I'm sorry that you missed it, Boo. But we we got it, so we're moving along, and yay. I'm afraid that's where you're wrong, Mr. Edgeworth. You see. You see, this changes everything. Indeed, very well then. Please tell us. What's different now that we know the witness saw this jar? If we look at this, okay, you see the suit of armor there. So, the, where the suit of armor is in the in the office, it it's by um, Gant's side. And they're saying the murder took place over on Lana's side when she was a detective there. So, I'm thinking that it's the location of where the murder took place in the room. And I'm gonna hit it with that. Allow me to take these in turn. At the moment of the murder, the witness saw this jar. At a very specific angle, I might add, Mr. Wright. Yes, well, knowing this, where could ha where could she have seen this jar? Where? The location of the jar is shown in the picture taken on the day of the crime. It's on a shelf in the office of Damon Gant. But the body was found lying near Lana Sky's desk. The witness testified so herself. Objection. Yes, and it is these two facts that reveal what actually transpired. You see, the struggling between Dark and Marshall did not take place in Lana Sky's office. It happened on the other side of the room in Chief Gant's office. Objection. Are you implying the murderer moved the victim's body? 
From Damon Grant's office to Lana Sky's office? Yes. But well, why would he do that? There's no reason. Exactly. If there wasn't a reason, he wouldn't have gone through the trouble. The only logical conclusion is that there was a reason. Do you know what reason it was, Mr. Wright? And yes, I scratched my back with a big old knife. Ugh. I finally figured it out. So this is why Lana tried to stop the trial. It's too late to quit now, though. Please recall the witness's testimony. She said she knocked away the man who was holding up the knife. In the next instant, the jar was hit and flew through the air. Now tell me, what could have sent the jar flying? I uh, would have to have been the impact from the impact the man made when he was knocked into the wall. Ladies and gentlemen, if I may draw your attention to this picture once more. Hey, look, you have way more dives I do than I do, okay? You are a Z Taco Ninja who is very scary at times. She's actually not. She's a wonderful person. If the man was knocked into the, into the direction of the shelf the jar was sitting on, what would he have hit? Uh, uh, the suit of armor holding a very sharp and dangerous looking sword. Yes. And since the man who was knocked into the armor was carrying a broken knife, he would have had been Neil Marshall wielding the King of Prosecutors trophy. No, Mr. Wright, you can't be thinking. Yes. There was another possibility of what actually transpired in that room. Uh oh, I'm here now and there. Man, you're just out showing love to everybody you can, dude. Understandable. Of course the perpetrator would have had no idea, but nevertheless... I... I don't know if I could go through with this... Uh, Mr. Wright, what's the matter? Oh man, you do good enough, dude. You show a lot of love to everybody I've met in the past couple of weeks, so... You do good, dude. If events took place as the defense theorized, then the outcome is obvious. In that moment, assuming the man Emma Sky knocked away was actually Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Oh, that's not good. Oh, it's definitely not easy, man. I I try daily to give everybody some type of love that's streaming. And there's a lot of back and forth, dude. You mean Mr. Marshall died because of me? Oh, no! Uh, again, that was such a weak no! Couldn't do the Darth Vader, you know? <laughs> I never imagined her testimony would lead to this. So it was the witness who took the victim's life. And then proved so with her own testimony. This is unprecedented. Very, very much so. What, what are you saying? I'm sorry, Miss Sky, but given the circumstances, Joe Dark murdered Prosecutor Marshall. How can you think it was Emma? How dare you try to pin the crime on her? Imagine that coming from you. If you recall, it was you who admitted to forging evidence two years ago. Uh, 
Very true, dude. I, I try to get to everybody each day, but it, it doesn't work out like that all the time. So I kind of pick and choose. And as horrible as that sounds, um, I do have some favorites, but I don't let that get in the way. I still just kind of bounce around. Some I'll stay and talk to, like Yoshi and you. But, uh, you know, other people I try to at least lurk. The reason you moved Prosecutor Marshall's body was to keep anyone else from finding out about what Emma did, wasn't it? I assure you, Mr. Edgeworth, I have no idea what you're talking about. If you hope to have anyone believe your insane allegations, I'm afraid you're going to have to have proof. Boo with the 23 biddies! Thank you, Mike! <laughs> Yeah, when you're not live. Tell me. Do you have any conclusive evidence that proves my sister killed Neil Marshall? Uh, evidence? I'm willing to bet you don't. Yes, it certainly would be difficult to prove this with evidence. Without evidence. If we don't have evidence, then we'll have to rely on testimony. I'm afraid that won't work in this case. Both parties involved in the incident are dead. We certainly can't get dead people to testify. I mean, yo, look, Mia came back and helped you a lot, dude. <laughs> Where's Maya? Channel Goodman. This has all been a wild goose chase from the beginning. Hmm, touche, Miss Guy. Of course, that only leaves us with one possibility. You mean there's still another possibility? Oh, what do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? I mean the possibility that the victim has left us a message. For better or for worse, Mr. Marshall did not die instantly. He may have left behind the name of the person who took his life. In one manner or another. That's... That's impossible! Most of the... Most of the people in my community I picked out because I know they support a lot. I want to support everyone in my community too. Oh, baby. <laughs> nah, dude. You do a good job, man. You do the best you can. I mean, unfortunately, you are only human, and you can't you can't stretch stretch yourself far enough to support everybody all at once. So, I mean, what you're doing is a is the best you could do. I mean, you you support different people every day, and that's honestly great, dude. I mean, you get yourself out there more, and you're helping other people along the way. What you were saying the other day. What was I saying the other day? I, I, I don't remember back that far. <laughs> oh, Mr. Wright, this is the only possibility left to you. A message from the deceased. Does such a message exist? Oh, about the jar! Right. I've got to think back to the court record. The real murderer's name that the victim may have left behind is in the evidence. This message from the deceased is already in our possession. M Mr. Wright, will you stop at nothing to prove my sister a murderer? Yeah, Libby's light, man. Just keep being you, dude. You do more than enough. And yes, with the jar, you were telling me there was a name on it. There, there has to be. Do not be mistaken, Miss Guy. Our purpose is not to accuse Emma of any crime. There is only one thing we seek. The truth. No matter how painful it may be. 
Uh, you do a damn good job at showing that you care, man. You definitely helped all of us out. And honestly, me and Libby have known you for maybe a two weeks, three weeks. And you've done a hell of a lot for us just by coming in, chatting up, and lurking and whatnot. I mean, you've, you've been awesome, dude. Now then, Mr. Wright. Please show us the piece of evidence that conveys a message from the deceased. Oh, if my hunch is right, I'll be happy. This is the message left by the deceased. Aw, oh, man. I'll make it up to you, baby. No worries. <laughs> You can cry on my shoulder, man! <laughs> this is the message left by the deceased. This is the blue badger from before, right? <laughs> That's right, dude. We do care, man. Oh, is he going to just speak the killer's name? If that thing could, I'm sure it would. Looks like everyone's forgotten this is just a jar. A message was left here, on the surface of this jar. What do you mean? If you look closely, you can see a faint trail of blood on this jar. It looks like someone wiped the blood away. Yes, but notice, for some reason the blood on some of the fragments was not wiped away. Hey man, you have your reasons for doing what you do, and no one should judge you for that. Yes, there is a line that drawn in blood. So, what you're saying is these dots were once lines. Prosecutor Marshall did not instantly die. He used the few precious moments left to him to leave behind a message. One that someone apparently wiped away. But blood must have seeped into the jaw where the lines changed directions. Precisely so. All we need to do is connect these points. Time to connect dots, people. And the victim's message will become apparent. No, no. Oh, she's definitely hiding the fact that she knows that her sister killed him by accident. Well, Mr. Wright, what kind of message did the victim leave for us? Your Honor, I believe these bloodstains will reveal us to us the answer. It's not the personal guy, but some of the people I've been their streams and they not once been in mine. I don't have time to waste supporting people that don't support me. The time I have, I want to give it to the people that deserve de deserve it, like you. <gasps> You're so sweet, man. I love you. <laughs> no, I, I get that, dude. I mean... If there's people going around just wanting support and don't want to give it back, then that, that's completely justifiable, you know? So, keep doing what you're doing, man. Of course, dude. I may not chat a whole bunch on Discord because Discord don't like me for some reason, but I try to do what I do, man. Oh yeah, it works both ways. I mean, that's... If you want to get if you want to get far, you have to do you have to put the work in to do it. So, I mean, I don't see why people I know and I know some people do feel that way that oh they should just get 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 without giving. That's not how it works. There's no way in hell. At least it shows you guys live now in Discord. True, I hope. <laughs> But I've got to connect these dots to make letters. There's only one thing the victim would have written given the circumstances. Uh, 
Hey man, you do what you gotta do. Like I said, it it works both ways. If you want support, you gotta give it. Oh, it already spells Emma. Look at it. That little girl did it. She's a murderer. What do you think I came up with this message? Hmm, yes. I feel like I'm teaching handwriting to us. Oh, God, I forgot to do the cross in the middle of the A. <laughs> hey, man. <clears throat> Multi stream all. That would be interesting, honestly. But, dude, leave a lurk. Go check out other people, man. You've been here for a while now. It's all good, bro. <laughs> Earth, yeah, let's try it again. Let's try it again. Ugh. I try, man. There we go. Nice. <coughs> it's a defense attorney's duty to prove their client's innocence. That's why all I've been thinking about is saving Lana. After all my efforts, I never thought it would turn out like this. Did you say Tar Heel? Is that, is that how it's pronounced? I hope I'm not butchering that. <laughs> Emma! So this is the final message Prosecutor Marshall left behind. Oh, she's, she's angry. The judge can't believe it. Of all people. She may not have meant it, but in the end, the one who took the victim's life was Emma Skye. Nice. I don't, I'm not entirely sure if I follow him or not, but I gotta check it out. See, Worthy? Can't say I didn't warn you. Chief Gant. Do you understand the implications of what you've done? What? What are you talking about? Two years ago, Joe Dark was sentenced to death. He was convinced because of his final murder. Convicted. I believe you were the prosecutor in the case, were you not? Ugh. Yes, worthy. Because of you, an innocent man was sa He's not innocent! He killed so many other people. Just not this one. And this guy's a prick. I know he's the one that did it. Not only that! But you used to forge dividends to ensure his conviction. Ugh. But Joe Dark really was a serial murder. That's undeniable. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid that's not important. Didn't you know we aren't defenders of justice? What? We're mere, merely keepers of the law. Sentencing a man to death is no light matter. Even if there wasn't any cover-up or evidence forgery. Ultimately, the responsibility falls on the prosecutor in charge. Despite when, uh, what anyone may say, this fact cannot be not denied. Jesus, speak, Jay! <laughs> You might have sent an innocent man to death. How can he just stand there like it wasn't his fault? Order! 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 Oh, we're on to some shit. The gavel's pounding felt on deaf ears. Unable to settle the crowd, the judge declared a recess. Where this child is headed, no one knows. <laughs> Ew! 
Can we get a bat in there to beat this fuck up? Oh, I wish. I wish. We are gonna continue this today. No, we ain't done with this yet. There's no... Mm -mm. <laughs> I don't care how long this goes. We're finishing this. Oh, February 25th, 1206. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. I wish we could get a bat in there to beat that smug look off that dude's face. Sorry, Edgeworth. I didn't mean to get you in trouble. <laughs> oh, don't worry about it. <clears throat> this is my problem, not yours. Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Oh, wait. Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Oh, yes I am. I'll come back later. Wait, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? You've got a lot of nerve, pal. Making a detective run all around while on duty. And on top of... And to top it off, you call me here. I've seen happier people at funerals. No, uh, I take it Lana's having you run errands again? Let me tell you... This is the last time, pal. Here, she asked me to give you this, to give this to you if there was a break in today's trial. Evidence law? Edgeworth was talking about this just the other day. <laughs> dude, I, I would love it if this dude got beat down, believe me. You must have the two- you must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule 1. No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. I is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. You could at least study some evidence law, really! Oh, the other guy. You mean Von... Oh, Von Karma? Von Karma was horrible. Uh, the chief prosecutor also wanted me to give you a message. A message? She said if you're planning to take him on, you're going to need this book. Him? I guess I'll need to give this book a thorough reading. Evidence law securely slipped into pocket. Doesn't look like that book will do you any good now, though. All that's left now is the chief prosecutor's sentence. That's where you're- that's where you're wrong, detective. Huh? Haven't you figured it out yet? Bye, Jesse! <laughs> Why I'm still sitting here in the prosecutor's seat. Despite all these allegations being thrown at me. Mr. Edgeworth? The real trial today hasn't begun yet. What? What else is there left to do? Your credibility's been all but ruined with this forged evidence you are unaware of. Emma Sky found out she unwittingly caused a man's death. And now you're telling me you want to do more? You've got to be kidding me, pal. You're missing the point, detective. You missed the up part, my... What? I know. I, whatever. <laughs> Lana didn't... Lana didn't did murder Detective Goodman. She merely stuck a knife into his dead body. That man's the real killer. That means the real killer is still out there. What? And we're going to expose him. Oh. Oh, okay. Yo, look, we all know what... 
crazy meant, okay? We all know we might be a little crazy, but I don't think he'd go that far. No matter what it takes. This case has hurt too many people. It's time to bring it to an end. Yes! Let's end it! I'm done with this damn case. I'm gonna move on. I want new. I want new stuff. Bell, bell with the hearts. God will... <clears throat> uh, God will now convene for the trial, Miss Lana Sky. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. The inquiry committee is planning to impose harsh penalties for your actions. Thank you for the news, Your Honor. Yes, well, uh huh. Normally, this is where the prosecution calls forth a witness. But, uh, mm -hmm. cough, cough. I'm not doing it. <coughs> This is it easy to say? You see, there is some concern that you, Mr. Edgeworth, may have, uh, struck a bargain. You think I may have manipulated the witnesses? Oh, I didn't say that, but yeah, everybody else does. They all think you're a scumbag. It's just, you see, everyone has been talking and... Very well, Your Honor. I have a solution. A solution? That being the case, the prosecution will allow the defense to call forth all four of their witnesses. What? But there is no precedent for what you're proposing. Undeniably, this is an unusual arrangement, but a very effective one. It would prove that I haven't struck any deals with the witnesses. Hmm, well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? Unbelievable. Edgeworth has found a way to continue the trial. Very well. The defense accepts the prosecution's proposal. Yo, it's really cool how Edgeworth and Phoenix do tend to come together, like, all the time. I kind of like their duo, and I think I have to fix my head. There we go. And it's settled. The uh, defense may now call forth the next witness. Wow, Morpheus Bacon Smith panels look sick as fuck. I just saw them for the first time. I gotta go check them out after stream then. Uh, Mr. Wright. <clears throat> Mr. Wright. You do realize this is your last chance. If you call the wrong witness... This trial is as good as over. The defense calls. The time's finally come to bring out the real murderer. And there he is. Damon Gant. The defense calls Damon Gant to the stand. D Damon Gant? What does he have to do with anything? Uh, as the defendant's partner two years ago, Mr. Gant has first-hand knowledge of the crime. I feel we should hear what he has to say about it. Hmm. As luck would have it, he should still be in the courthouse. He would also be the least likely to have been manipulated by me in any way. Wouldn't you agree, Your Honor? Sure. All right, Bailiff. Please exhort Mr. Grant to the stand. It's kind of like a bootleg Sean Connery I have going on. Like, Sean Connery if he was a pussy. <laughs> Witness, please state your name and occupation. Oh. <laughs> What is this? Some kind of practical joke? I was just on my way to lunch. Your name and occupation, sir. Oh, Worthy, are you sure you want to do this? Your name and occupation. So, you want to play hardball, eh? 
please, Mr. Gat. Fine. My name is Damon Gant. I'm the acting chief of police. Now then, Chief Gant, the court requests to hear your testimony. Oh, oh right -o. What's with the grim face? First, let's clear up the SO9 incident. Oh, -ho. you mean that time when Lana's sister murdered the prosecutor? Personally, I think it's been made pretty clear already. There are still some things unaccounted for. Oh, like what? Like the role you played in all of this. Son, either you're very brave or very foolish. You are unaware. You are aware, of course, that... A police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons? Sure. Take my testimony, for example. I don't have to give it if I don't want to. How does that work? What? Is this true? Well, I'm afraid so. The chief of police has the right to refuse uh, to testify. Of course, such an action carries with it certain risks. Ho oh, ho, don't worry. I'm not here to hand you your trial. Just remember, if this turns out to be a big waste of time, don't say I didn't warn you. Dude's making threats on stand. Can, can we get somebody to, you know, beat the shit out of him or something? I mean, pro police brutality is a thing in this game, right? Can, can we go practice some? Nobody likes him, believe me. He's too just cheery for my own likeness. Like, good. His own good. You know what? You know what I'm trying to say. Very well. The witness may now begin his testimony. No one likes him, Shion. No one. <laughs> SL9 incident. As I recall, Neil and I were questioning him that day. To make a long story short, we slipped up. That power outage didn't help either. When I went to my office, I found Lana Sky there. Apparently, she had already arranged the crime scene. As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. Hmm, that sounds fishy. Hmm, is that when Dark was arrested? Him. He was lying on the floor unconscious. Oh. That had to suck. When, a, when Emma said Neo flying, it seems Dark bumped his head. Oh, I see. Everything seems pretty clear cut. If the police chief has the right to refuse to testify, then I'd better hit him hard and fast. What, to make him refuse faster? As I recall, Neil and I were questioning him that day. Let's press on everything, like always, and see if that drags anything out. As I recall, a ceremony was held at the police department that day. Yes, that's right. I guess you could say I'm a workaholic. After winning his award, Neil was all fired up too. It's probably what spooked Dark and made him run away like that. You're right, I will save right before I try to present something. Trying to help someone with bots, guy. With bots? Uh, what do you mean, uh, crazy? You know what? I'm just gonna say for the hell of it. Thank you, boo. <laughs> Was the defendant Lana Sky also present in the room? Like steam helmet. Uh, steam element bot. Shit like that. Ow. 
Yeah, I have a chatbot that we had to tell fuck off because it was, uh, it was like blocking everybody from chat. So, I'm not really sure how to set that up my damn self. I'm working on it, though. I don't quite remember. At, at the very least, she wasn't there when Dark ran for it. To make a long story short, we slipped up and the power outage didn't help either. Yeah, I'll, I'll hit you up uh, later on over at Discord, man. It was harassing people. Yo, it was really bad harassing people, too. It was funny shit. Alright, man. Thank you. That'd be awesome, dude. So the two of you ran immediately after him, right? Oh, yes, that's right. But Dark made it to the elevator first. So Neil and I split up. He went upstairs and went down. I went downstairs, I guess you could say. He got lucky. Alright, man. Will do, bro. Thank you so much. Now maybe our, uh, our chatbot could stop fucking with people. <laughs> <clears throat> That's why it's off right now, because it was pretty much deleting comments. Oh, what's this about a power outage? What's up, Antoine? Oh, that? The elevator stopped all of a sudden, and I got the shock of my life. Well, probably not as shocked as Neo was when that knife went through to his heart, though. He is an asshole! Alright, dude, I'll look into that. Definitely. That's not funny. That's really not funny. And you could add commands to it, too. Like, shout-out commands and sub-command and lure command if you want them. That'd be cool to start shouting out people. I would love to. Just to uh, give a little more back if I can. When I went to my office, I found Lana there. How was your stream, Antoine? I've seen that you were playing, I think, uh, I think it was Mortal Kombat 11? Or 10? Either, they all look alike to me, so... I'm not really too big on fighters. Could you tell us what you saw? It was a shocking sight. Neil and that serial killer were lying in a heap on the floor, all tangled together. Zuck was also lying collapsed on the floor. Yes, apparently he hit his head and was knocked out. Nice, man. Yeah, I was around lurking, but um, I was also uh, in Libby's stream. We were playing Dauntless uh, at the same time with um, Coda. And next to them were those two poor girls. Lana and Emma. Lana was cradling Emma in her arms. Looking back at it now, she must have already known what her sister had done. But yeah, man, I'm glad it went well for you. Apparently, she had already arranged the crime scene. How can you know that? <laughs> because of the victim's body. It had already been moved. So that means... You found the body near Lana's desk. That's right! I think you said earlier. It was my suit of armor that really stabbed the prosecutor. Yes. Anyway... As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. It's definitely something he had to do. So you're saying that the forgery had already been taken had already taken place by the time you arrived in your office. 
No, dude, this was definitely definitely came out before the anime. This actually started on the uh, Game Boy Advance uh, with the first three games. Then it then it just ported over to almost everything, like the DS, the 3DS, and now it's on uh, PC and all the main consoles: PS4, Switch, Xbox uh, One. But yeah, no, this game is sick, dude. That the forgery had already taken place by the time you arrived at your office. Uh, that's right! What I'm saying is exactly what I'm saying. I can understand how Lana must have felt. But moving a body and hiding evidence are inexcusable no matter what the circumstances. <coughs> is that how it really went down? Staring at the witness won't do you any good, Mr. Wright. If you're going to stab anything, you'd better... You're better off staring at the court record. If that was true, why did you find everything in that safe, right? The guy is hiding something. He definitely is, Xion. Worthy, worthy, always the smooth talker. But which piece of evidence ties Gant to the forgery? Lana did admit to forging evidence, but that can't be the whole truth. Somehow, I've got to link Gant to the incident. Alright, I'm gonna save here. And we're gonna fumble through some evidence. When I went to my office, I found Lana there. Apparently she had already arranged the crime scene. As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. Well, I want to see this. Okay, it only has two damn things. But, uh, the vase? It's either the vase or... I mean, we found this in his desk. So, do you think I could present that? Half of it was in his desk. Then we found this in his, um, thing. But, I'm, oh, God, I'm really thinking it, it's this right here. Again, I, like I said, I saved so we could fumble through some things, but... The music stopped! Okay. <clears throat> you claim you had nothing to do with the forgery. But I'm afraid that is a claim you cannot back up. Explain yourself. Several pieces of evidence were found in your office. Take this list for example. That's the list Emma Sky drew her picture on! The vase does po uh, point at Emma. But I think we're going to have to um, use that later on. But so far, this has been good. This was discovered in your desk. Not only that, but a piece of this jar was sitting in your office. It was found inside your safe. It was found where? You see, Chief Gat. These articles of evidence uncovered in your office are both concrete proof that you also played a part in the illegal investigation. Oh, we got him. We got him. Chief Gant, what's the meaning of this? Oh, here's a defense attorney who may I even rival worthy. So you admit to it, then, that you were involved in the forgery? Who, me? Or do you mean you? And he's gonna throw it back at us. He's gonna say, we forged the shit. Me? Why would I have anything to do with that? Well, you were the one who snuck into my office when you found this evidence. Prosecutors aren't the only ones capable of forging evidence, you know. Defense attorneys can do it so can do so too. Oh snap! <laughs> Isn't that right? 
Righto. However, Detective Gumshoe was present during the investigation. Worthy, my boy. Not even detectives are exempt from the law. Rest assured, Dick will receive his due punishment. But what? If Detective Gumshoe's salary drops any further, he'll end up paying to work. Yes, well, in light of the detective's presence, please give us your testimony regarding these pieces of evidence found in your office and their relation to forgery that took place at the, at the crime scene. My, my. Kids these days no longer know how to put two and two together. Oh, here's where he tries to lie, saying I did it. Let's see. What was it now? A jar fragment and a list. For all I know, you could have planted them in my office. Anyway, you can't prove when those pieces of evidence were discovered. If they were found after Dark was convicted, then they're worthless. There's no reason I'd participate in forgery. Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. How would it... Mm-hmm, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. What investigating the crime scene? You should have been more careful to observe protocol. <clears throat> Do you understand that? I am the chief of police, right? There will be consequences. Oh, indeed, I believe I will press charges so you won't make the same mistake again. I wouldn't dare play this game. <laughs> Why not, Antoine? This game is actually great, dude. It keeps you on your toes, and you have to pay attention to every little bit of what's going on, along with the evidence and the people that you're talking to, because it all comes back. My apologies, Chief, but would you mind waiting until tomorrow for that? Today is, well, you know. Oh, all right, OG. In return, though. Too much talking. Aw, oh, man. Oh, Antron J1, I would, I would mess you up. It's, well, it would mess you up. It's fun, but God, it will drive you nuts. Yeah, no, it really would drive you crazy. It's, it's driven me crazy a couple of times, not gonna lie. Especially this case here. I know, I know. This place, right? Uh, what are these guys? Telepathic? Evidence and forgery. For all I know, you could have planted them in my office. I'd appreciate it if you'd stop making these ridiculous allegations. Yes, you do have a point. You wouldn't have the guts to do something like that. What? I'll have you know, back in the day, I once broke into a cattle ranch and tipped... But Mr. Wright, what are you saying? Anyway, you can't prove you didn't carry in the evidence, can you? If you have proof to the con contrary, you're going to need it later. Later? What are you talking about? <coughs> what else? I'm talking about when Rido's prints are found. Yes, if they're found inside my safe, they would prove his investigation was illegal. Grr, I've never faced anyone as slimy as this guy. He, he is pretty freaking slimy. Anyway, you can't prove who, when those pieces of evidence were discovered. What do you mean by that? This is all poorly hypothetical, of course. But suppose I did place those items in my safe. Such an act wouldn't necessarily constitute forgery. If concealing evidence found at a crime scene isn't forgery, I'm not, though, speaking yet 
I'm not through speaking yet, Rido. It all depends on when the evidence was discovered. If they were found after Dark was convicted, then they are worthless. Are you saying this jar fragment wasn't discovered in the initial investigation? It would appear not. After all, it wasn't listed in the evidence list. For all we know, it could have suddenly materialized the day after Dark was sentenced. He's such a piece of shit. Oh, and wouldn't that be convenient? Right. The Chief is talking about a possibility. So long as you can't rule that out. Your remarks, however clever they may be, will only succeed in wasting time. Tell me something I don't know. Come on, Rido! Objection! <laughs> Think about it. There's no reason I'd participate in forgery. Rearranging a crime scene wouldn't help me in any help me out in any way. Let's see. How can you look me in the eye and say that? <laughs> crazy killer, yeah, right. More like crazy helper, son of a bitch. <laughs> How can you look me in the eye and say that? Yeah, try not to overstress yourself, crazy. You're doing good, man. <laughs> because I'm innocent. Remember, who was that it that murdered Neil? I'm not sure I care for the word murder here. Uh, but in the end of the person responsible for Mr. Marshall's unfortunate demise was Emma Skye. Well, now do you see? Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. Really, Chief Gant? At the very least, there is one very large benefit you've reaped from all this. Oh, I wasn't aware of what is this benefit. That would, of course, be the position you have, Chief of Police. Oh! The resolution of the SO9 incident secured your promotion to Chief. That in itself is sufficient motive. Ho 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 ho! Oh, that's a good one. Ah. Uh. Another lurker. <laughs> and do you really think I'm that incompetent? It's all good, man. Take care of what you gotta take care of, bro. What do you mean? Even without that case, I was already in line to become the next chief. The resolution of SO9 merely sped up the inevitable a little. Not only that, but... Tana would... Nalana would be his puppet. Very true. I sent him a long message on what to do for a stream element spot. I'm so lost, lol. I've been sitting here trying to figure it out. Sham, we've all been sitting here trying to figure it out. Believe me. Alright, man. I'll definitely hit you up, uh... Maybe even after the stream or tomorrow at some point. I'm lost too due to not being here earlier. Dude, you would have had to been here like five streams ago than realize anything about this case. It's how long it's been. I'm streaming until this case is over. I, I've, I had enough of this damn case. I want to get it over with. Is that true, Edgeworth? Yes, and he was going to be made chief anyway. Ah! Be careful when pointing that finger, or you might wind up being the one pointed at. Alright, man. Yeah, this case is very annoying, believe me. I'm with you, boo. So that means 
Mm, there's only one possible motivation for you to commit forgery. If you didn't do it for yourself, then you did it for someone else. Uh, why is he always playing with his hair? <laughs> Don't be silly, Worthy. You know me better than that. There are only three people I look out for. Me, myself, and I. There, it's out in the open now. Edgeworth is the uh, guy in the red. He's the prosecutor, a uh, prosecuting attorney. Aji, would you mind if I changed my testimony a little? Uh, by all means, please do. I wouldn't be anyone's accomplice if there was nothing in it for me. Oh, but there is something in it for you. Nothing in it for you. Sorry, but the only person I care about is yours truly. That girl, Lana's little sister, was it? If you think I felt sorry for her, you'd better think again. You're an evil son of a bitch and you kind of remind me of Red White from Blue Corp. And by the way, he's playing with his hair because he's lying. Oh, I know that much, but I, it's just the fact that it's always this, like, all, I don't have hair to, you know, imitate it because, you know, bzz, but, yeah. You're right, you don't feel sorry for anyone, but tough on crime and tough on people, that's how I was raised. You seem to be lax enough on yourself, though. Ho ho ho! Oh, that's a good one, Worthy. Hmm, could there have been something in it for him? Given his selfish selfishness, would he have helped someone out? Definitely going to help out his accomplice, it's Lana Sky. <coughs> because the only reason he would help her out is because he wanted her to go over to the prosecuting office so he could control that. It's kind of a theory I had this whole damn case. True, you might not help out anyone for their sake. But if it would benefit you, you might decide to assist someone. But Mr. Wright, it appears you're positively determined to portray the chief. As a nice man who likes to lend people a hand. Oh god, no Why is the judge so fucking stupid? It's not what I meant. Very well, then. Who is this person you believe Chief Gant may have helped forge evidence? Take that! Take that. Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky, the, the, the defendant! I believe it's quite obvious in light of the circumstances. Emma Sky fell victim to an unfortunate series of events. Who would want to help her more than her own sister, Lana? And as for Chief Gant, he would also have a reason to help Lana if she asked him to. That reason, of course, is self-profit. Self-profit? What do you mean, Mr. Wright? After the SL9 incident was resolved, Lana Sky was appointed Chief Prosecutor at the Prosecutor's Office. The person who arranged this job change was you, Chief Gant. But by... Oh, what do you benefit from all of this? He would be able to use the Chief Prosecutor as his puppet. Essentially, he would acquire unchecked author authority over the all investigations. Uh, do you mean to tell me that despite the Chief's formidable appearance, he plays with puppets? Oh, fucking god damn it. Why, why can't we have a better judge? Seriously, this guy... This dude, this dude here? He's fucking stupid. <laughs> He's just, just dumb. Oh, wait! You must mean puppet as in someone forced to do his bidding! Never mind! Yeah, yeah, Shan, I'm with you. Shake my damn head. You see, you see it. You see it. You see it, chicken. Uh, admit it, Chief. You assisted Lana Sky in forging evidence. 
Your motive to appoint her to chief prosecutor so you could control her. <laughs> right, oh my boy, you have quite an imagination. Let me ask you something. What? Do you have any proof of this? That I controlled Lana? For example, is Lana testifying that I've done such a thing? The, the judge has no brain cells at all, man. None at all. Lana. She's keeping quiet to protect Emma. There's no way she'd testify against Gant. I'm afraid without any proof, this all amounts to nothing more than mere conjecture. Unless... And that is also what happened in this incident. This incident? Uh, which one would that be? Of course I'm talking about... The murder of Detective Bruce Goodman. The Chief Prosecutor has been acting strange throughout this whole entire trial. Almost as if someone has been controlling her. Very, very true. Very true indeed. <laughs> Worthy, you better watch your tongue. I wouldn't want you to get hurt. Uh, just what do you mean? What he means, Your Honor, is that Chief Gant is involved in the murder of Detective Goodman. Not only that, but the Chief is now making Lana take the rap to cover up his involvement. What? 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 Ah. Yeah. Order! Order, I say! Order! Uh, Mr. Wright, you, you can't be serious. Huh? This... This is an affront to the highest ranking officer in our law enforcement agency. To accuse the chief of police of blackmail and murder. This uh, 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 impossible. <coughs> Your Honor, I was merely reiterating what Mr. Edwards said in easier to understand language because he's a Brit fuck. It's too late, Mr. Wright. There's no turning back for us now. Looks like he's the one who's decided to go through with this. You can prove this, Mr. Wright. That the chief, a high-ranking officer of the law, is involved in this murder. Good question. Regardless, <coughs> Regardless of his rank or title, Chief Gant is just a man. The question is, is he a criminal? I believe the evidence will tell. I see. Alright then. Let's see what Mr. Wright's got and it better be good. And we're gonna save people because I don't want to fuck this up. Here we go fumbling with evidence again. Show us what evidence that, Chief, that ties Chief Gen to the murder of Detective Goodman. Oh lord, oh lord, oh lord, oh lord. Ah, uh, good boy. <laughs> Do you think we should prevent the, uh, uh, present the vase? Because we did, uh... You have the what? The number? What number? You think lucky number seven? Or do you think it's the vase? I I'm gonna wait for you, Liv, because you've been helping me through this the whole damn time. So, <clears throat> I could present this paper, but it's still blank at the top. But we did use his number in his office to open up the safe to get the pieces of the vase and that cloth. The cloth has not come up. That's why I'm not going to present that yet. <coughs> In 
it tags him to the murder from the safe. All right, well, we saved, so music didn't change. This is the ID card list. Yes, the one that shows who entered the evidence room on the day of the... Okay! Oh, baby, you're amazing! There was one ID on this list we couldn't determine the owner of yesterday. Uh, lucky number seven. Sorry, but there's no way you can prove that's my card ID number. It's your number. What? How do you know that? The safe in Chief Gant's office requires a code to open. A seven digit code. Seven digits? You don't mean... I'm afraid so, Your Honor. The code is 77777777. The same as the remaining ID card number on that list. Chief Gant, you entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. Oh, we got his ass now! Order, order! Chief Gant, what do you have to say? <coughs> Nothing. The defense's search for my, of my office was a violation of regulations. And I, w and I will demand Mr. Wright be punished to the maximum extent of the law. But right now, this court determines an explanation from you. About the use of this ID card. Oh, Dragonfly, thank you for the host, sweetie. Uh, Chief Gat, so you admit it. You went to the evidence room on the day of the crime. Oh, what about it? I'm Chief of Police, whether it's the evidence room or the bathroom. What's the difference? I can go anywhere I want. Tell me. When you entered the room, were you alone? I always go to the bathroom alone, as do I as I do with the evidence room. Detective Goodman wouldn't have happened to be with you that day, would he? Uh, of course not. Why would he be? I hadn't seen him in days. You hadn't seen him in days, Chief Gant? I'm afraid you've just undone yourself. On that day, you had to have met with Detective Goodman. Uh, what do you mean? This child's purpose is to determine Lana Sky's guilt. Objection. Not... No, it isn't, Your Honor. This child's purpose is to determine the truth. If Chief Gant met the victim on the day of the crime, then we need to determine one thing. What transpired during that meeting? In that case, Mr. Wright, I'm going to have to ask you for evidence. Show us proof that the victim went to meet Chief Gant on that day. That's easy, we have that one. He had to file a missing files report. Detective Goodman lost his ID card on the day of the crime. Well, to be more accurate, Jake Marshall stole it. So Detective Goodman filed out a lost item report. He would have had to give the report to the Chief of Police. And you are in possession of the report. Which means you can't be sure if he filed it. He filed it. How do I know, you ask? Because he needed to enter the evidence room that day. He needed to. Yes, to transfer the evidence out. Oh! Detective Goodman took the form to you, Chief Gant. Then, you accompanied the detective to the evidence room. I accompanied him? There's no other way the murderer and Detective Goodman could have entered that room. Oh, we're getting his ass. Hold on, let me guess what you're going to say next. I, the chief of police, murdered poor Goodman. 
Phillies win! And there's your nightly sports update. Sports I do not care about, but the Phillies win, people! Thanks, Mike, for the report. Exactly. But wait! Uh, Chief didn't necessarily need to accompany him to the evidence room. He could have just lent him his ID card. Yes. Now that you mention it, I believe I might have done something of the sort. Antoine partying it up for the Phillies. Look at him go. <laughs> Sorry, but that's not possible. This guy did it, Mike. This guy. Right here. You see this orange fuck? This dude did it. For damn sure. According to the record, your card was only used once. Yet, you showed us your ID card earlier. If you had really lent it to Detective Goodman, it would have been found on his body. No. No! Oh, God, what the fuck just happened to him? That is Chief... The Chief of Police... Chief Gat. Chief Gat, you did it! <clears throat> the murder was most likely a spur-of-the-moment crime for no one in their right mind. Would choose the police department as a place to commit murder. After the murder, you contacted Lana at the prosecutor's office. Why? To dispose of Detective Goodman's body, of course. Alright, crazy man. Thank you again for the help, dude. I'll get in touch with you uh, as soon as I'm done here. If it's not too late, that of course. <laughs> Y'all forgetting, mister, right? Oh, well. What the F was that? Him getting got. That's what's the what? Shion, you just confused the living shit out of me. Alright, man. I'll definitely drop you a call afterwards, then. <clears throat> that the victim's body was discovered in the prosecutor's office parking lot. How did he manage to move it there? I was at the police department the entire day, you know. And everyone's aware that Lana stayed at the prosecutor's office after the ceremony. Alright, man. I'll hit you up on there, then. Everyone except me, it seems. Still, you're the chief of police. You have an entire police force at your disposal. Oh, so you think I just ordered an officer to do it? Hey, you! Take this here dead body over to the prosecutor's office. I don't think so. Chief Gant, you left all the evidence we need to prove how you moved the body of the prosecutor's office to the prosecutor's office. And all this time I thought it was a useless clue of just taking up space. How could the chief have moved the body? Mr. Wright, show us this evidence. To move the victim's body, Chief Gant used this. Oh... Bingo! This is how we moved Detective Goodman's body. What's that? A screwdriver. But what does that have to do with this case? Mr. Edgeworth, think back to the day of the crime. What is this screwdriver doing here? It's here because... Ah! I was asked to go by Chief Gant, no less. He told me he wanted me to keep it here in the prosecutor's office. In any case, on the day of the stabbings, I brought this here. After the ceremony ended that day, I didn't plan to return to the prosecutor's office. But you did, because Chief Gant asked you to. You mean I... I... 
The body was found in the trunk of Mr. Edwards' car. I think it's obvious what happened. The body was moved by that car. Detective Goodman's body was carried in the trunk of Mr. Edwards' car. Yes. Unless, of course, you have another explanation, Chief. Why else would you have asked Mr. Edgeworth to transport evidence from a closed case? There's only one plausible explanation. To transport the body to your accomplice. Miss Alana Skye. What? What the fu- I told you there was no reason for that screwdriver to exist. Other than just that. Because if you look, if you look back at the evidence, Chief Gant went to the uh, went to the evidence room with Goodman at 4:20 p.m. Killed Goodman, cleaned up the scene, but told Miles Edgeworth to go get the screwdriver at 4:40. Right? As Edgeworth was going through the building, he had Goodman's body put into the car. And now, if you recall, the prosecutor's office and the police station are a distance of 30 minutes away from each other. Edgeworth showed up at 712 back at the prosecutor's office to put the screwdriver, you know, in his office. And the murder, the murder itself uh, took place at 415, according to the autopsy. So... That's what happened. He killed and cleaned it in 20 minutes. What the fuck? I mean, it, it it's it's plausible. But that's how I think it happened. Order, order. What's going on here? Is there no room for rebuttal to the defense's outrageous accusations? Think back to the photograph Miss Starr took at the prosecutor's office. This was not a photo of the body being stuffed in the trunk to be taken away. It was exactly the opposite. It is a photo of the body being taken from the trunk. Chief Gad, please say something. I believe... Your time's up. My time's up. Sorry, Reddo, but I'm having lunch with the District Attorney's General after this. But we have to get going if we're to make it in time for the early bird special. But, but, the cross-examination isn't finished yet. Remember what I told you earlier. A police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons. Like the right to refuse to testify. I'm invoking that right now. What? That is not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. So you're going to just run away after all this? Run away? Don't make me laugh, Worthy. I stabbed old Goodman, that's what you're saying, right? <laughs> Shion's all about that, wow! But if I had any conclusive evidence, you would have presented it by now. Well, I... You think I had Lana dispose of the body? If so, then show your proof and get it over with. Hmm... I'll say it again, Mr. Wright. Damon Gant is the current chief of police. This court will not tolerate any accusations against him without concrete proof. Bust, 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 bust. <laughs> well, Mr. Wright, your, your, your honor. Um, saving. Yeah, I feel this is a good part to do this in. Do you have any concrete proof? 
are proof that Chief Gat murdered Detective Goodman and made Miss Sky dispose of the body. Do I have any concrete proof? Do I have any proof? I don't have any proof of this! Uh, there's, there's no proof. Uh, it's no use showing evidence. I'm not even sure of myself. No, Your Honor, I present at present I have no conclusive evidence. <laughs> See, OG? <clears throat> In that case, this court is forced to penalize you for your allegations against the Cho. Oh, God. What? Here's a tip never gamble what you can't afford to lose, Rido. It seems that Lady Luck was on my side again today. <laughs> okay, OG. I'll leave the rest to you. Oh, did I pick the wrong thing? I think I picked the wrong thing. I warned you earlier, Mr. Wright. Or this. Yeah, I picked the wrong thing. Well, ah! Oh! Lady Luck, hmm. Maybe we should have a word with her. Mr. Edgeworth, what do you mean? I didn't lose! Not yet, man! Edgy came and, uh, bailed me out again! There's the one lady who knows the real truth behind this child. We haven't yet had the honor of hearing her testimony. A lady who knows the truth. Other, another witness? Oh, Lana! Yes, Lana! We haven't heard from her yet! In the absence of conclusive evidence, the only other method of proof is testimony. But Chief Gant has invoked his right to refuse to testify. There's still someone else who more w one more witness who can answer all the questions. Wait, what about that book Gumshoe gave you? It just said it just said like two things. This is it. Raised in this trial, there's someone right in this very room. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, who is this person? <laughs> Why are you asking me, Your Honor? Have you forgotten? The defense is the one calling witnesses today. Oh, he's right. Uh, Mr. Wright, does such a witness exist? She may not be willing to tell the truth, but we can't just stop now. Yes, Your Honor. The defense calls forth... The defendant. Miss Lana Sky. <clears throat> she was in the underground parking lot at 5.15 p.m. on February 21st. Her task, to dispose of a victim's body. In accordance with a certain someone's orders... Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth? The prosecution has no objections, Your Honor. Very well. This court will take its final recess for the day. In 15 minutes, we will reconvene to hear the defendant's testimony. This court is now in re- Hold on. Huh? Chief Cat, I thought you were going to eat. Listen, good Lana. He's talking to Lana. I don't think you need me to tell the tell you this, but if you accept Mr. Wright's claims, there will be terrible consequences. Oh, this motherfucker is doing it again. That's right. Your sister will be found guilty. For Neil Marshall's murder, and but she wouldn't be charged because she was only defending herself. So what? She off the motherfucker. She good? I think. Ah, oh, this isn't good. Of course, you'd never support such outrageous 
claims. I got, I got the fucking hiccups. Again! <coughs> Just something to think about. Alright then. I've got a lunch date to meet. <laughs> Fuck you, guy. I really hate that orange motherfucker. Okay, if there aren't any further objections. Escort is now in recess. Oh god, what are we doing? February 25th, 204 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. LOL, every time you stream this, you get it get it at near the end of it. Uh, we're not stopping. Like I said, I don't give a damn. This is probably going to be one of my longest streams, but we ain't stopping. Looks like we managed to stay in the game. Yeah, thanks to your help, Edgeworth. Uh, the chief. He's something else, huh, pals? Detective Gumshoe! <laughs> I'm not a detective anymore. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. I'm sorry about that unemployed Detective Gumshoe. Uh, don't worry. I've already decided where to go to work now. I'ma work at your office. My office? Sure. I'll take the place of that top naughty girl you used to work with. Could he mean... Maya? Stu, looks like we're all out of moves now. Chief Gent's done it again. How is it he always gets the upper hand? It's not fair he has the right to refuse to testify. Hmph, <laughs> settle down, right? Remember what the judge said. But Chief! Uh, it is not right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. Risks. What did he mean by that? It's simple. If the chief refuses to testify, the opposite also holds true. You mean he forfeits his right to say anything too? Who the fuck? Emma! Yay! Emma, are you okay? Yeah! When I came to, I was in a medical office. I've been listening to the whole trial from the gallery. So she heard everything that's been going on. Um, Emma, I'm sorry for what I said before. No, don't be. It was the truth. You know, it's funny. I almost feel somehow relieved. Relieved? Yeah, now I finally know what really happened. To think that all this time, my sister was being blackmailed by that terrible man. And she did it all just to protect me. Ever since her appointment as Chief Prosecutor, everyone who knew her said she changed. Perhaps it was easier that way for her. Uh, what do you mean, guy? Yeah. What, what do you think I mean, to follow Chief Gant's orders? She must have shut herself up deep inside. To force her to do anything and everything the Chief told her to do. And that must be why she became so cold. It was all my fault! It's all because I... I murdered Mr. Marshall! Hey, don't go blaming yourself now. If you want to blame anyone, blame society, pal. Chief Gant may be able to fool everyone else with his forgery, but he can't fool my memory. I remember now, I knocked Mr. Marshall into that armor. I... I see. Well, we'd better get back. It's time for the final act. Oh, Lord. Emma, why don't you wait here? No. I'm going with you. I want to be there. When Lana tells the truth. Well, let's go, right? It's time to win this. Oh, here we go, people. 
Don't, don't mind that to be continued because it's to be continued right about now. Yeah, yeah, we're saving. You oh, wanna fuck this up? It's almost over. Almost over. Fuck this case. It's so goddamn long. Jesus. Oh, here we go. Now then. Oh, well, the defendant, Miss Lotta Sky, please take the stand. What up, girl? How you doing, Brit? <laughs> Miss Lana Sky. <clears throat> Miss Lana Sky, you are the chief prosecutor. I'm sure you're aware of what is required of you. But, Mr. Edgeworth, you already know everything. What's up, zombie? On the ZPN News. Tell us about yourself and this game for a sec, please. Alright, if I have to, I have to. I mean, I can't I can't go ahead and, you know, let people down now. But, I'm Jay, rated J from Cynical Gaming. I've been doing this for about a month to maybe a month and a week. And this is one of the top games I've been playing. It's uh, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney HD Collection. Over here on uh, PS4. And... It's fucking confusing. Very confusing. Jesus. But anyway. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much about it. I hope I did not, uh, disappoint. Even though I may have disappointed myself. But anyway, hi. Okay. Eh. Make it so. Pretty good. <laughs> Showing the love. Gotta show the love, Black Dragon. You already know everything. You know all that I've done these past two years. Ah, Libby with the hearts! Love them hearts. <laughs> show us. Continue as normal, please. Sorry to win. Oh, you didn't interrupt, zombie! It's always cool to have the zombie here. Please provide the court with your testimony, Miss Sky. And remember, you are under oath. We want to hear the truth. Of course, the truth. I can't do women's voices, I apologize. <laughs> Lana, no matter what happens, I'll always be your sister. Why would you say that? That's so weird. <laughs> now then, your testimony if you will. First, tell us about your relationship with Chief Gant. Everything hinges on your testimony. You're the only chance we have to get Gant. Huh. The only chance we have to get Gant. Gant into fabrication. I worked alongside Gant for years. There's no truth to this blackmail theory. I fabricated the evidence two years ago all by myself. But yet you're lying about every damn thing, woman! Tell the truth! When I found Prosecutor Marshall's body, I rearranged the crime scene. ZPN eating cotton candy watching you! Well, I mean... Thank you? <laughs> My only motivation was to get Dark convicted. It had nothing to do with Emma. I mean, if if anything, why not cotton candy, right? It's good. Hmm. Are you sure about this testimony? Your Honor, I'm confessing to a capital offense. Of course I'm sure. But Lana... If this is true, then that means Chief Gant has nothing to do with this. That's what I've been telling you from the beginning. Please, Mr. Wright, you've got to help her. She's sacrificing herself because of me. Because I may have killed that guy. <laughs> I mean, if she killed him, right, and she would have to go to some type of process. She might not be charged because it was an accident, but why is she freely standing there? Why is she in cuffs somewhere? Seriously. She's not. I know my own sister. Whenever she speaks stiffly like that, she's hiding something inside. Deep down, in her prison pocket. 
She's really screaming in agony. <laughs> yeah, this is no time to start second guessing myself. The well, defense may now begin its cross examination. Gant and the fabrication. I worked alongside Gant for years. Again, we're gonna press everything to see what we could drag out. Then we'll start going through the evidence again. Just the same process as always. How many years exactly? Ever since I made senior detective. Let's see, I was 24 then, so that would be about five years. Detective Gant and Detective Sky were legendary partners. I personally saw them testify in numerous cases. She must have been good coming from the same school as Mia. Damon Gant was a respectable detective, that's why. There's no truth to this blackmail theory. Bullshit, he's blackmailing the hell out of you. But think about it, Miss Sky. You didn't murder Detective Goodman. You told me as much yesterday in jail. You still don't get it, do you, Mr. Wright? Any testimony you cannot present in court is as useless as idle gossip. He's on his eighth jar of cotton candy. Man! Insulin! You gotta think about it. <laughs> Diabetes is right around the corner! Stop! <laughs> I stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. And... I fabricated the evidence two years ago all by myself. Bullshit, woman! Did you do so to help your sister? Joe Dark was a serial killer. My sister almost became his last victim that day. I didn't want that incident to ruin her life. But what she did was justifiable self-defense. She wouldn't have been charged with anything. That's not the point. She was traumatized that day all because of that creep. That's why I couldn't forgive him. Lana! So that's why you fabricated the evidence two years ago. And when I found Prosecutor Marshall's body, I rearranged the crime scene. You say you did this all by yourself? Yes. Would you mind telling us what you found when you arrived at the crime scene? Alright, Sinoko Gaming, I have one more person left to go. Thank you for being on my news. You're welcome, man. Thanks for stopping by, buddy. That was kind of awesome. I've never been on the news before. Yay. It seems I was the first person to discover the scene. The Broken Prosecutor Award knife was stuck in the victim's body. What? Who? But Prosecutor Marshall died from an unfortunate accident. That's only a situation you dreamed of, po dreamed was possible. The reality is, it wasn't my sister who took the prosecutor's life. Fantasize all you want, Mr. Wright, but I'll never change this statement. You mean, Prosecutor Marshall wound up being killed by Dark? Something like that. If that is so, what happened to the other murder weapon? Doc was carrying a switchblade knife. Oh. That was lying on the floor a little distance away. It was probably knocked away in the struggle. That's not how it went down. She's trying to cover up her lies with more lies. All just to protect me. So when you found the scene like this, what did you do? After all, this is what everything boils down to. Yes. I broke off the tip of Dark's knife, planted it inside the, bo the wound, then moved the body. Wow. 
You planted the tip of Dark's knife in the... And then moved the... But why? Why would you do that? You of all people should know, Edgeworth. You've always had a good head on your shoulders. My head isn't that bad, but maybe I ought to ask for the sake of the others. Why did you plant the knife? But why did you do that? Come now, Mr. Wright, even you should be able to figure that out. Very well, let's add this to the witness's testimony. The reason Mr. S Miss Sky fabricated the knife. I knew the tip of the weapon found buried in the body would be all the proof we needed. According to your testimony, Prosecutor Marshall's broken knife was the murder weapon, right? Yes, and leaving it at that might point the blame away from Dark. I felt the most effective way to get him convicted would be by having the tip of his knife found inside the victim's body. So you... You buried it inside the... You buried it inside the victim's stab wound! Yes. Because I hated Dark for what he did. My only motivation was to get Dark convicted. It had nothing to do with Emma. So you rearranged the, the crime scene. Are you sure you didn't do this to keep Emma from looking like the murderer? How many times do I have to tell you, Mr. Wright? Emma didn't do it, period. Are you so desperate to hide the fact? You're willing to risk the death sentence. She's lying! She did it so I wouldn't be blamed for what happened! In any case, as a prosecutor, what I've done is unpardonable. There's nothing I could do to make up for my actions. Mr. Wright, my sister's lying! Looks like she's determined to protect you to the end. She insists she fabricated the evidence by herself. There's no way she could have done it alone! I've got to get Lana to talk more. If she's lying, then she's bound to slip up and make a contradiction. Okay, but what do we do? Now this... Now... Now we say it. <laughs> Because now we gotta play with evidence again. But what evidence do we have? I wanna go to the end because Tip switch, uh, nah, she's lying. I knew the tip of the weapon found buried in the body would be all the proof we needed. My only motivation was to get Dark convicted. It had nothing to do with Emma. <sighs> do, do you think this is the time where we have to do the jar? Because I think uh, presenting the, dar the jar shows that you know, he wrote Emma's name. So Emma has something to do with it. But then again, I could be wrong like I have before. But, let's do it. <laughs> the witness statement clear... Oh, God. But, that this is why we saved people. Any motivation was to get Dark convicted, it had nothing to do with Emma. Stabbed in the back, died from a punctured heart and a lung, a knife tip was found in the wound. Maybe the knife? Yeah, we're gonna have to fumble with evidence. I do apologize, this is annoying. This might not even be the right statement. I'm not sure I follow up. 
clearly or contradicts. Yeah, no. Oh, I do sorry. I'm sorry, people. Jed, if you have any input. sure where to go from here but I think I tried that already god damn it there we go I worked inside can for years there you go I fabricated the evidence two years ago all by myself I broke out the tip of dark's knife planted it inside the wound then moved the body I knew the tip of the weapon found buried in his body would be all the proof we needed. My only motivation was to get Dark convicted. Do you think maybe I have to present something with this one? I am at a loss. <sighs> Fuck. Okay. Again, we're just gonna fumble. I'm gonna try new stuff that I didn't do before and hopefully hit something on the head. But, yeah, I'm. Press why she moved the body. That would be here. Back. Any breakthrough? Uh, I don't know, man. I'm fumbling with more evidence. Did you do so to help your sister? Joe Dark was a serial killer. My sister almost became his last victim. I didn't want the incident to ruin her life. But what she did was just about self-defense. She wouldn't have to be charged. There's no point. She was traumatized with the day of the creep. But all right. Prosecutor, I rearranged the crime scene. Press on this one. Okay. You say you did this all by yourself? Yes. And would you mind telling us what you found when you arrived at the crime scene? It seems I was the first person to discover the scene. The broken prosecutor award knife was stuck in the victim's body. No, but she placed a piece of the knife in the vic. Yeah. The victim was Neil Marshall. What? And she said this was bullshit. But Prosecutor Marshall died from an unfortunate accident. It's only a situation you dreamed was possible. The reality is, it wasn't my sister who took the prosecutor's life. Fantasize all you want, Mr. Wright, but I'll never change this statement. You mean, Prosecutor Marshall wound up being killed by Dark. Something like that. If that is so, what happened to the other murder weapon? Dark was carrying a switchblade knife. Oh, that was lying on the floor a distance away. It was probably knocked away in the struggle. That's not how it went down. She's trying to cover up her lies with more lies. So, okay. So when you found the scene like this, what did you do? After all, this is what... So, okay, I press here, right? Not press, but... Do I present the knife here? No. Oh, god damn it. I just wanted to end! No, press. 
I, I pressed everything before, Ben. And it told me nothing. Like, after, after I press here, you find that you move the body. But why? Why would you do that? You of all people should know, Edgeworth. You've always had a good head on your shoulders. My head isn't that bad, but... Maybe I should X this? When you showed up on the scene, where exactly was the victim's body? It was where you deduced. It was by Chief Gant's desk. But the body was found by your desk. Why did you move it there? The reason for that is simple. Let's have the witness explain this in more detail. The reason Miss Sky moved the body... The pieces of the jar... Oh... Sh that... The pieces of the jar that shattered during the events threatened my plan. My only motivation was to get Dark convicted. It had nothing... Pieces of the jar, you mean... Yes, that wretched jar you showed us earlier. In order to show that, that Dark committed the crime, I felt it would be more expedient to move the body. So... When you first found the body, the jar was already... Of course, it had been shattered to pieces. If you look, if you looked at the crime scene, it would be clear right away what happened. Neil Marshall was dead, and Dark was lying unconscious. In other words, the jar must have been broken during their struggle. I see. What? What's the matter, Emma? Apparently, the jar shattered at, t at the time of the crime was committed. But I have a feeling there is more to it than that. There must be a contradiction here somewhere. Anyway, I committed this fabrication completely alone. I I'm going to save again. And then press the jar. Not press the jar, but... Mr. Right, my sister's lying. Yeah, yeah, I get her, I get her, I get her. There we go. Miss Scott, understand how you feel. You committed that crime two years ago to protect your sister. You mean the forgery at the scene where Neil Marshall was murdered? If that truth were to be exposed now, the past two years of your life will have been in vain. Even so, I am compelled to bring that to everyone's attention. A significant contradiction within your testimony. A contradiction in my testimony? You testified and I quote, The pieces of the jar that shattered during the events threatened my plan. Th that's right. Uh, do you have a problem with that? It's a simple oversight, really. You see, a message was written on this jar with the victim's blood. Yes, the prosecutor must have written it in his final moments. Exactly so. And this is where the contradiction lies. In order for the victim to be able to write his message on the jar, it must not have yet been broken before he died. Oh! He couldn't have written Emma's name on the shattered jar. Order! Order! Your Honor, it would appear... 
more information is needed in regard to this jaw and its bloody message. We may be missing something critical here. Something critical. Chief Prosecutor, it seems you're as in the dark as we are about the truth towards which we're headed. What? Just tell us exactly what you saw. We'll piece together the information to arrive at the truth. Very well. The witness may now continue her testimony. Oh, jar and message in blood. Here we go, people. I immediately noticed the blood traces on the jar. But it was dark in the room and I didn't have time to check it out. To be safe, I wiped away the blood. The fragments were large, so I'm sure I got them all. All I could think about was wiping them clean before they were discovered. So she knew, she already knew that Emma's name was on that jar. You mean, you were the one who wiped away the message in blood. I, I wasn't chief prosecutor at the time. She didn't think Dark was the real murderer. That's why she tried to erase the real evidence. Very well. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. Jar and message in blood. I immediately noticed the blood traces in the jar. On the jar. So the jar was already broken. It's a miracle that thing hadn't broken earlier. It certainly looks as feeble as uh, the defense's case. Thanks, Judge. Fuck you too, man. Not as feeble as the judge's judgment. <clears throat> you are an ace detective who never missed a detail. Do you really expect us to believe you didn't investigate what was written on the jaw pieces? Normally I would have. But it was dark in the room and I didn't have time to check it out. So you didn't know your sister's name was written on the jar? No. If I had known, I would have gathered all the pieces and ground them into dust. Oh, that helps my case. Lana, if you do that for me? It seems you two might make it up yet. <laughs> anyway, I just barely had enough time to move the body as it was. If someone happened upon the scene, you'd lose your chance to erase the evidence. You must have been in a hurry. I was. I knew I had to destroy the evidence before anyone came. This is rather shocking. To be safe, I wiped away the blood. Hold on. Oh, God, this damn case. Never ending! <laughs> I'm afraid this action of yours reveals what really happened. Oh, what do you mean? If you really thought Dark killed Prosecutor Marshall, you wouldn't have wiped away the blood. What else could I have done in that situation? Lana! I only had a few moments. There wasn't enough time for me to do anything else but gather up the pieces. The fragments were large, so I'm sure I got them all. But how could you see with the power out? It should have been pitch black in that office. A detective is always prepared, Mr. Wright. Even now, I always carry a pocket light and a camera with me. Even I carry a bottle of emergency lumen oil wherever I go. I never miss anything. I got every last piece. No, you didn't. No, you didn't, girl. All I could think about was wiping them clean before they were discovered. I'm a save because we're gonna have to start fucking with evidence. Hold it. 
So you illegally rearranged the crime scene. Yes. I don't have any excuse for my actions. I'm so sorry, Lana. I didn't know. I've treated you so badly all this time. It's not too late. There's still plenty of time to make up. After we've gotten to the bottom of this incident. No doubt this day will leave a permanent stain on the history of the prosecutor's office. More contradictions have surfaced in her testimony. Your sister's really putting up a fight. She must really care about you. Still, she's not doing this the right way. I think I've finally figured out the contradictions in her testimony. There's one final possibility that might turn everything around. Why didn't you tell me? Mm. Immediately noticed the jar. But it was dark in the room and I didn't have time to contra- uh, Yeah, check. Alright. Here we go to save the day. The fragments were large, so I'm sure I got them all. All I could think about was wiping them clean before they were discovered. The fragments are large, so... I mean, obviously she didn't get them all. Do I... Do I go ahead and present the jar again? Because we see that she didn't get them all. Um... You know what? Just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna do this again. Because we literally only have two strikes left. Oh, no. Okay, I was right. Miss Guy, I believe this jar conceals a truth even you were unaware of. What? We found the final piece of this jar in Chief Gant's safe. In the Chief's safe? But how? I knew it. She really didn't know. There's something even more disturbing about that final piece. There was... still blood on it. Uh, but the witness just testified that she gathered every last piece and wiped the blood off of them. Yes, which leaves us with only one explanation. On the night... On the night Prosecutor Marshall was murdered, you were not the first one to show up on the scene. Chief Kent got there before you. Oh shit. Oh, it's coming to a head, thank god. But couldn't the defendant have simply missed a piece? Whatever. I'm afraid that's unlikely. The pieces are too big for anyone to miss, let alone an ace detective. Uh, maybe, that may well be, but everyone makes mistakes. Even I once wasted an entire day looking for my dentures. They were in my mouth all along. Ha! Ah, can you believe it? Yeah, I can fucking believe it, Judge. You're stupid! Have you forgotten, Your Honor? When this witness arrived at the scene, the jaw was already broken. Oh, that! There's no way a name could have been written on a shattered jaw. Yo, Antoine, thanks for the bits, man. You're, you're awesome, dude. Another person discovered the scene prior to the witness. I hope you're not implying this person was Chief Gan. At the time, he was looking for Doc downstairs. Besides, even if he was there first, he... The question is, if he did arrive there first, why did he hide the fact for two years? Well, Your Honor, can you answer thus that? Ah, ah, no! Oh, God. <coughs> okay, then. Wait, I'm not the one on trial here. Damon Gant arrived at the crime scene prior to the witness. He proceeded to break the jar and purposefully hid one of the broken pieces. Question. What is this action called? 
Fabrication of evidence. Oh, but why would Chief Gag do that? In light of what happened afterwards, isn't it clear? Well, what happened afterwards? In discovering the scene, Lana Sky believed her sister Emma killed the victim. Determined to help her sister, she sought Gant's aid. Lending her his aid, Gant helped her create evidence that incriminated Dark. Sparing Emma, and therein lies the reason. The reason why Miss Skye became the Chief's puppet. Oh, oh, we got you now, girl! No, no, I, I did it on my own. Please, sis, stop trying to protect the Chief. I, I can't watch you suffer anymore for my sake. No, you didn't. It wasn't you, Emma. You didn't kill anyone. Don't believe anything Mr. Wright says. Defense attorneys make up the most foul lies to defend their clients. Foul lies? Imagine that coming from my own client. Right? Uh, I guess you do seem the type who likes to twist the truth. Wait a minute. What if... We're still smack dab in the middle of Gant's trap. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Lana, maybe right after all. What do you mean, right? So, you do tell foul lies then, Mr. Wright? Miss Guy, please testify once more. But. If evidence was fabricated behind your back, then Emma's accidental killing of Prosecutor Marshall might also be a lie. Oh, shit. But, but I, I do remember knocking over Mr. Marshall. Miss Guy, if you will. I, I can't. There's nothing to be afraid of anymore. This cross-examination may not change a thing. However, there is a possibility that it will, if you tell the truth. Very well. I'll testify about what I really saw. Alright, the witness may testify once more for the final time. Oh, actual crime scene. When I arrived, I found Mr. Marshall's body impaled on the suit of armor's sword. Oh, just like we said! Emma and Dark were lying unconscious on the floor nearby. When I saw what happened, I thought she did it. That's why I erased all the evidence that linked her to the murder. I had Chief Get help me remove the body from the sword and carry it. But... If it all really was a fabrication, Emma might be innocent. The now we're getting her to help. Yes. Unbelievable. The body was impaled on the armored sword. You were the only one who saw that. If only you had proof. Actually, I do have proof. Got her. <laughs> she on. I gave it to Mr. Wright just this morning. Bitch, you lying. What? To me? It's a picture I took of the crime scene as I entered it. I thought it might be needed. But I don't remember receiving a picture like that. Lana must have known. See, Mr. Wright, she really does have faith in you. Yeah, I, what's up, Dragonfly? Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. How? Why? Where is this picture? Very well, Mr. Wright. Please present this picture. I don't remember receiving any pictures from... The book! It's in the book! Lana said she gave it to you this morning, right? I seem to remember getting something from her then. Let's check the evidence again. There must be a picture in it somewhere.
Open the... P oh. Mm -hmm. No. Get, get. C come on. Thank you. Oh. Oh. Hey, there's a picture here. No, oh, oh god, there's a picture here. Oh, that's fucked. Oh, oh my. This is this the actual crime scene. No other detective saw the crime scene like this. Because I contacted criminal affairs only after I had rearranged everything. Lana's picture inserted into the court record. Oh, we got proof that he died on that armor now. Yes, Mr. Wright! The piece cut out from his vest, could that be? The cloth we found inside Chief Gant's safe. What? Oh god, we have that! That's what we found Emma's fingerprints on though. That cloth, it had fingerprints on it. Whosoever fingerprints those are must be the real murderer. <clears throat> what? But those fingerprints. They're yours, Emma. Why are your lips turning all purple, Mr. Wright? Anyway, let's get on with the cross-examination. So long as you tell the truth, we should be able to flush out the real murderer. Very well. Uh, the defense may now begin its cross-examination. Oh, here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. <clears throat> oh, oh shit. Oh, this fuck is back. God damn it. Ho oh, oh, ho, come on now, Aji. This is the poorest excuse for a trial I've ever seen. Chief God! What now you want? What? Now you want to make me out as the bad guy too? If so, you'd like to put in a word or two in my defense? Objection. I'm afraid it's too late for that. What? You already declined to testify. That means you forfeited your right to make statements of any sort. This must be that risk we were talking about earlier. And just sit back and relax and enjoy the sound of the noose tightening around your neck. Ah! Oh god. Uh, so, what? You think I'm worried? Sorry to disappoint you, but I don't need to make any statements. What do you mean? The evidence will do all the talking for me. Even if I can't testify, I can still present evidence. Yes, that's true. Wait, you mean? You still have some conclusive evidence? No, I don't, but someone does. Someone? So, what's your excuse, Rido? Ah. Uh, why have you been keeping quiet about it? You do have something to show us, right? Something that proves who knocked over Neil Marshall causing his death. Oh, he's gonna try to fuck us. Conclusive evidence that leaves no room for doubt. Is, is this true, Mr. Wright? Oh, God. If I show that piece of evidence now... Emma is sure to be made out as the murderer. Uh, Mr. Wright, you have any more evidence presented now, and if you try to conceal anything, you will be the one appearing before the Board of Inquiries. Don't... I'll just be a... It'll just be a repeat. What do I do now? Don't do it, don't do it! <laughs> oh, baby, I don't know if I should or should not. I. 
I'd better think this through carefully. I can't afford to make the wrong decision. Should I present to present that piece of evidence? Oh no! Oh, okay. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> Dodge the bullet there. Uh... We're gonna show it. Yes, Your Honor. I do have further evidence. All right. It's the time's finally come to show it to them. Oh, I fucking I fucked that up. It's a trap. Oh. <laughs> Those prints have got to be the chiefs! Now then, let's see this conclusive evidence! The evidence that shows who actually murdered Prosecutor Marshall! Oh god. I don't know if it's conclusive evidence that it proves that she murdered him or not though. Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want, before we move on, I want to show you something. Look at this picture. Look at how the blood is all over. And that piece was cut out. Right? That piece has no blood on it at all. It's a piece of leather cloth. Yes, it, it most likely was cut from the victim's vest near his chest. What's this? There's a big handprint on it. Surely it must have been left on the cloth by whoever shoved the victim into the sword. Uh, whose fingerprints are these? I'm sure Rido has checked, haven't you? Well, whose are they? Oh, that's weird. It's really weird, ain't it, Shion? And I know, boo, poor Emma. They're Miss Skies. Miss Emma Skies. What? They're mine? So I really did do it? See? I told you it was conclusive. But this was found in your safe. That means it's possible you forged it. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't remember any cloth in my safe. Do you really expect me to believe that? But... Give it up, Mr. Wright. It's over. You shouldn't have presented that. By presenting that evidence... You tied Emma Sky to Neil Marshall's death. No. You fell into a trap. Uh, it appears we have our killer. No. Oh, God. No, no, no. <laughs> Everything hinged on that point. In the end. Oh, God damn it. This is why I should listen to you, boo. But guess what? <laughs> no, we saved at the point. Cannot show evidence. Your Honor, I don't have any evidence I can present at this point in time. Wh what? You lie! <sighs> he was too excited for you to present. He did. He was. Chief Gatton! You you opened my safe. I know you took that what was inside. The conclusive evidence. Oh, he just admitted that it was in his safe. I don't know what you're talking about. M Mr. Wright, why don't you show them? We found it together. Oh, I see it's because you know the truth, don't you? You know whose fingerprints are on it. That's why you won't present it. What are you talking about, Chief Gent? Can't you figure it out? A good look at this picture. See the victim's vest? Notice anything odd about the chest area? 
It looks like part of it's been cut out or some for some reason. You mean you had this in your safe? What? That means you, the chief of police, have been concealing evidence. This is going to be the biggest scandal in the history of the police department. Impressive. To be honest, I didn't think you had the gall, Rido. Well, I can't just let you pin me up as a the murderer. I'll tell you what really happened. Oh, what? You mean you admit to it? Oh, wait, what the hell? He just. I don't think he's given up. I really don't. I was the first person uh, to arrive at the crime scene that day. It then occurred to me that I could use the situation to control Lot. Maybe he did give up. So you really were manipulating her? I knew Lana. If I made it look like this, the blame lay with her sister, that when she saw the scene, she would ask me for my aid. So you assisted Miss Sky. I told her to arrange all the evidence. I had her plant the knife tip in the victim's body and move the body across the room. And I ended up using that evidence to get Joe Dark convicted. When I tampered with the crime scene, I hid two pieces of evidence. This was before Lana arrived at the scene you mind you. Two pieces of evidence? You mean those items in your safe? But why? For insurance, of course. Insurance? I was sure my plan would work, but it's always best to be prepared for the worst. I wasn't about to let anyone blame me for a murder that girl committed. You mean you were ca calculating that far ahead while forging the evidence? Well, three, really. The list also. Yeah, the also the list. He did hide the list too. What do you take me for, a fool? I didn't make police chief by dumb luck. See this jar fragment. I hid the most legible part of Emma's name. I didn't expect Lana to go and wipe the blood off of all the pieces. But if you fabricated all the evidence, what's to say you didn't fabricate the message on this jar too? Ho ho ho! Some people just don't know when to quit, do they? That's why I kept one more item for insurance. You mean that piece of cloth? Come on, Rido, cough it up already. I know you have it. And I would have got away with it too if it wasn't for those meddling kids. Ha! It's not over. It's not over. Did I save? I need to check that again. Thank you. Shion over there distracting me and shit. Come on, Rido. Cough it up already. I know you have it. What are you waiting for, Mr. Wright? So you admit to it then, Chief Gant. That you were hiding the cloth that you cut off the victim's vest in your safe. Yes, I admit it. I didn't want to have to do it th that, but being chief and all. But it's a lot better than being portrayed as a murderer. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say for yourself? Uh, just a moment ago, you said you didn't have any evidence you could present. Foolish move, Rido. You should have shown it then before it was too late. I did, and you fucked me over. Bastard. Orange fuck. Hate that guy. It's been a long battle. But the moment of truth has finally arrived. But what if the handprint was from when she pushed him, but it really was really him who killed the guy? That's what I'm thinking. Great minds, think it right, boo-boo. 
<laughs> as long as I don't mess up here, victory is mine. Oh, he's calling for it, so I'm one more time. Your Honor, I don't have evidence. I do have evidence present now. All right then, let's see the conclusive evidence. The evidence that shows who actually murdered Prosecutor Marshall. Oh, this seems like it did before. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece of the victim's vest. Oh, yes! At last, you finally bought it into the open. That's a handprint on the piece of cloth. Your Honor, the prosecution requests that I... that. Your Honor, the prosecution requests that be immediately sent to the lab for analysts. This handprint on the leather... There must have been a strong impact for it to be left so clearly. You mean... It could have... It could not have been forged. It must be authentic, conclusive evidence. Edgy! No! <laughs> you are as slow on the uptake as ever, Worthy. What? Think about it. Rado had it all this time to present this evidence. Yet, he was late, reluctant to do so. Why would that be? You already know. You know whose fingerprints are that? Are they? Yeah, who they belong to! There we go. M Mr. Wright, do you really know? Whoever fingerprints belong to must be the real murderer. Whose fingerprints are they? Very well. I'll tell you. It should be okay now. Everything's proceeding as I predicted. The, the, per the person to whom these fingerprints belong to... You can't hide it. We have to show her. Abba! Abba Sky! <clears throat> what? They're mine? I'm sorry, Emma. But why? Why didn't you tell me? Oh, because you were gonna freak the fuck out, that's why. Ho 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 ho! You're really something, Rido. You knew this girl did it all along. And you still tried to pin the murder on me. So it's true. Tragic, but true. This girl really did shove Prosecutor Marshall to his death. Hold it. How could you? You, you monster! Miss Sky, you knew whose fingerprints those were all along, yet you. you acted like she really didn't. Miss Sky, it's not over yet. What? I said this trial isn't over yet. Huh, <laughs> but I'm afraid it is over, boy. Not only this trial, but your career, too. What do you mean, my career? You purposely concealed this conclusive evidence. That, my friend, is a serious offense. I'm looking forward to pressing charges after the defendant is convicted. I'll have your badge, boy. What's the matter, cut? Cat got your tongue? Aren't you going to tell us how it feels? How it feels to be the one who single-handedly turned a poor little girl into a murderer? Oh, before I do that, there's just one little thing I have to clear up. Oh, and what's that? You really killed Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Well, who really killed Prosecutor Neil Marshall? What? Chief Gant, you are absolutely right. This piece of cloth proves who the real murderer is. Who killed Neil Marshall, you ask? It was Emma Sky, wasn't it? 
I'm afraid that's not possible. You see, this piece of cloth contains a critical contradiction, which Phoenix Wright fucking pulls out of his ass all the time! <laughs> what? A contradiction? What is this fool babbling about? I'm talking about a contradiction, one that proves who the real killer is! with it. Mr. Wright, uh, this piece of cloth. Why could it possibly contradict? Chief Gant, your tyrannical reign ends here. Behold, the piece of evidence that contradicts this cloth. Right there. And what exactly is this supposed to be? This is the picture Miss Sky took. Take a good look at it. I don't have to save. This is what I was talking about before. See where the piece of his vest was cut out? Yes, his shirt is showing underneath. It's hard to make out with all the blood on his vest though. Exactly my point. His chest is soaked with blood. That's only natural. His lungs, no doubt, were punctured. Blood poured out of his mouth. Oh, but this piece of cloth. Wait! There's no blood on it! Ugh. Since Emma Sky's fingerprints are on this cloth, there's no doubt that she shoved the prosecutor aside. However, Mr. Marshall was not impaled on the sword at that time. No, this, this is nonsense! Now then, Chief Gant, let me ask you something. Prosecutor Marshall was not impaled when he was shoved aside. He most likely hit his head on the ground and was knocked out. If so, then tell me, who could have been, who could it have been? Who could have arrived at the scene before Miss Lana Sky? Picked up the unconscious prosecutor and impaled him on the armor's sword. Mm. Then, to make it look like Emma was responsible for the prosecutor's death, said person proceeded to write her name on the jar with the victim's blood. A jar that they then broke on purpose to leave behind a clue. And make Lana believe her sister did it. Remember what you admitted only moments ago. That you personally cut out this bloodless piece of the victim's vest. Ironic, isn't it? Though the very act of creating insurance, you proved that you were the actual murderer. No! It's finally all over. Oh, we got this prick now! Objection! Huh. Huh. Ho 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 ho! That was close, Rido. You almost had me. Sorry, but you'll have to do better than that. Sorry, but you'll have to do better than that. I refute all allegations. Oh, what do you mean refute his allegations? You see, that piece of cloth is illegal evidence. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Order, order. Oh, what nonsense is this? Illegal evidence cannot be used to convict a suspect. Remember, Uji. Earlier, old Rido here concealed that piece of cloth. So then, what's your excuse, Rido? You do have some conclusive evidence, don't you? Oh, got the hiccups. Your Honor, I don't have any evidence I can present at this time. Well, that's true. The defense did refuse to present the evidence. At that moment, that piece of cloth ceased to be legal evidence. But that's not fair. Ho 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 ho! You actually think you could best me in court? It looks like the last laughs on you, son. Ah, oh, come on. 
What else do we have? I'm afraid Mr. Gant's claim is legally correct. Well, Mr. Edgeworth. True, illegal evidence cannot be used to convict a person. Assuming, of course, that the evidence is indeed illegal. Mm, well, Mr. Wright. It seems at last... The time for me to reveal my plan has finally arrived. Mr. Wright, do you admit to it? Oh, God. Save it again, people! Oh, this has been a long one. Mr. Wright, do you admit to it? Do the purposefully and illegal conceal this piece of cloth? I did not... Oh, fuck you, get low is on our side! <laughs> I admit I refused to present it at one point. Ah, so the evidence is illegal. Objection. No, it isn't, Mr. Gant. Huh? It's not that I didn't present evidence then. It's that I couldn't. Uh, what do you mean you couldn't? There are certain proceedings involved when presenting evidence. No, Udgy, don't listen to his lies! He's nothing but a coward! You can't believe him! Objection. There is only one issue left to be resolved in this trial. Is this evidence illegal or not? Very well, let us settle this once and for all! Elia, you, you refuse to present the evidence! If you can prove your conduct was not in violation of the law, Book. This is my proof, Your Honor. Evidence law. What's this? I've done my homework too, Chief. Indeed, Emma Sky's fingerprints were on this piece of cloth. However, at that point in time, this was merely a piece of cloth, nothing more. What? You see, it's written right here in this book. The second rule of evidence law. Rule number one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. I found this police, this piece of evidence myself inside your safe. It goes without saying, I did not have approval from the police department. Rule number two, unregistered evidence presented must be re relevant to the case on trial. And here is the crux of the matter. You see, at the time, I was it was impossible for me to prove the relevance between the cloth and the SL9 incident. <laughs> Throw the book at his smug face! Right, she out of which I could! What? What kind of nonsense is this? You want relevancy? Just take one look at this picture and... Objection. Sorry. But can you recall when was this when was that picture presented? That was shown only a few moments ago. No, he's right. At the beginning of today's trial, that piece of cloth was still meaningless. The person who gave it value as evidence was you, Damon Gant. Uh. You yourself confessed to a certain truth. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece of the victim's vest? Oh, yes! No! It was then that you approved this cloth. As conclusive evidence, Yes, you, the chief of police, personally approved this cloth. The only person who could have cut this from the victim's vest is the one who stood before Prosecutor Marshall in his final moments. In other words, the real murderer, and there's only one person who could be who it could be. Damon Gant! The killer was you! No mm-hmm. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm the 
not laughing that long. Jesus Christ, dude! It's going fucking nuts! Oh, boo, I think we did it! I think we did it! I knew I should have gotten rid of him! That good for nothing scum. For two years he's been snooping around the department trying to get something on me. Crimes are being committed every day, yet he insisted on hounding me. Well, your crime wasn't exactly petty. He wanted to reinvestigate the case. He recruited Angel Star, then convinced Bruce Goodman. Detective Goodman? Yeah, that's right. If the evidence is transferred, I'll lose my only chance to find out the truth. Please, you've got to help me. I wasn't doing his voice. Fuck the cowboy voice. Goodman turned him down, as he ought to. Still, Jake Marshall didn't know when to quit. He, st he stole Goodman's ID card and tried to take a the evidence. Goodman came to me that day. He wanted to file a lost item report. I went with him to the evidence room. Then all of a sudden, he decided to speak out. What are you talking about, Goodman? Can you please reopen the investigation, Chief? We can't transfer the evidence out. There are too many questions left unanswered. He opened the evidence locker, and as he was t taking the evidence out, he said... It's not too late. I'm going to hand all this over to Marshall. Well, to be honest, I was a bit taken aback by his words. I had a bad feeling when he came to see me, but I never thought he'd bring up SL9. That's when I saw it. That accursed knife. I couldn't just pull it out. Doing so would have only led to more blood making it near impossible to hide your crime. Even so, the blood was just pouring out. I didn't know who might stumble in, so I hurried to wipe it up. I was worrying so much about the floor, I didn't realize my fatal mistake. The bloody handprint on Detective Gumshoe's locker. I used to be known as the crime computer, but everyone has to start somewhere, I guess. I was too nervous. I had no business doing any of it. Then you put the body in my car. I'm sorry, I couldn't think of any other way to move the body. I broke your chunk, but what's the big deal? You make a lot more than any than us detectives ever will. Ugh. Leaving the prosecution's car aside, how, how could you get Miss Sky involved in all of this? Well, she had as much to lose as I did if the truth came out. So you took the evidence from Detective Goodman's locker. I felt bad for having to do it. I also didn't have the time to pick and choose what to take. So, you left the jar fragments and the glove. Yeah. It looks like I was better off being an investigator of crimes than a committer. Yeah, you should have kept your nose clean, you fucking orange prick. They all did their best to get in my way. It was a pretty shitty car. It was a pretty shitty car. I've got to hand it to them. They do their jobs well, much to my dismay. Fake evidence doesn't hold up very well upon close examination. You must have known that. Tell me, Worthy. Why do you stand in court? Me? You despise criminals. I can feel it. You and me, we're the same. One day you'll understand. 
Oh, believe me, you will. You're just one man. You'll see what it really takes to bring them down, once you try to go it alone. Oh shit, he's trying to get under edgy skin. Well, looks like it's time to say goodbye. Oh, edgy. What? Uh, looks like we'll have to cancel that lunch date. Sorry, old friend. Uh, I'm sorry too, Damon Gant. Who I knew you was as you used to be long ago. You were once a fine investigator and an example to others on the force. I'm sorry to learn that you are no longer that person. Those days are gone now, OG. Thanks for all the memories, though. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Now you have Rido here. And worthy. With these two around, you can't go wrong. In fact, I could hear them already. The melodies, the melodious sound of whatever. Oh, it's fucking over. These are two things I want you to understand. Yes. First, your sister never hurt anyone. Second, Damon Gant betrayed you from the beginning. You see, Miss Sky, you no longer have any reason to keep silent. You're right. When this trial is over, I'll tell everything. All that I've done these past two years. From the time I had Gant help, help me forge evidence up until today. So, it seems all the questions raised in this trial have been answered. I'm sorry, Miss Guy, I couldn't get you out of all your trouble. <laughs> my, my, what high standards you have for a rookie. I can see why Mia thought so highly of you. Who knows, a few years from now, you just might make it to the top. About time she smiles! I owe you my thanks, Mr. Wright. Miss Skye. And to you too, Mr. Edgeworth. You've suffered every bit as much as I have over these past few days. Believe me, I know how much of an ordeal it's been for you. <laughs> it was nothing. I was worried the pressure might break you, and yet, you rose above it all and guided Mr. Wright to victory. You've done well, Mr. Edgeworth. S stop it. I, I only did my job. And you gonna cry? In light of this case, it seems a good self-examining is in order for all of us. Miss Sky. Yes, Your Honor. You are innocent of murder, however. Although the Chief blackmailed you, the fact is you still acted as his accomplice. A trial will be scheduled for those crimes at a later date. Yes, I understand, Your Honor. Is there something amusing about all this? Why are you smiling? It's been a long time, Your Honor. A long time since I've felt free of these heavy chains. I'm so happy for her. Well, this trial has gone far too long already. Regarding the charge of murder, this court finds the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. Not guilty. Fuck yeah. I did it. <laughs> Fuck this case. It's over. This is all this court has adjourned. Uh, February 25th, 5.03 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Woo! <laughs> Damn right, Libby. At long last, it's finally over. Uh, Emma? What? Why the long face? I'm sorry your sister didn't get completely off the hook, but at least she wasn't convicted for a murder she didn't commit. No, that's not it. Just now, after the trial ended. 
I could see why Mia Fey thought so highly of you. I owe my thanks, Mr. Wright. And to you too, Mr. Edgeworth. You've suffered every bit as much as- yeah, we fucking read this, come on. Get that new stuff so we can get that. <laughs> Edgewan, party it up! That was intense! It was, yo, it was! You don't understand! You know, I did my best too. But Lana didn't say a single word to me. Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Oh. Yes, I am. I'll come back later. Wait! Detective Gumshoe, what is it? You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? Making the detective run around while on duty. And on top of it, the to top it up. He said this earlier. Hey, light up, pals. I'm only kidding. Oh. Are, are you here because of my sister again? Nope. Not this time. I came today because of you, pal. Me? That's right. I thought you'd like to see someone. Aw, come show you. Fucking lovable dumb fuck, Lana. Should you be should you be doing this? She's still under arrest, you know. Oh uh, well, I won't tell if you won't. Uh, Emma, I owe you my an apology. It's okay, sis. Don't worry about it. That day two years ago. was the first time in my life I ever panicked. It was all I could do to keep myself from screaming. All I could think about was keeping you from getting wrapped up in that mess. Sis, I asked Gant to help me cover up the truth. I thought I was doing it for your sake, but now I realize I was wrong. I changed after that day. I had to. It was the only way I could make it through the past two years. I knew how much I was hurting you by distancing myself. But I couldn't bring myself to tell you what I did. I, I was scared. Scared that you'd look at me with those eyes of yours. How else is she supposed to look at you? With her ass? Damn it. But, sis, you were only doing it for me. No. Uh? I turned my back on you that day. In hiding what I believed to be true, I was deceiving you. Sis! I'm such a fool. It took me all this time to realize it. Antoine with that booty! <laughs> oh, shake it, man! Shake it! Emma, I'm so sorry. But sis, you don't have to apologize. I'm... I'm happy now. You're happy? Of course. You know, sis, I always knew that one day you'd come back. And now you have! <laughs> So thick it claps. Clappity clap 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 them booty cheeks. Aw, look at him, so cute! No one could change the past. The only thing we could do is strive to make up for our mistakes. Why must we make up for our mistakes, you ask? Because, in so doing, we can find the way back to our rightful path. And it is from there that we can move on toward a brighter future. At least that's what I felt watching the two sisters make up. Aw, Phoenix has a heart. Mr. Wright? Mr. Gumshoe? Uh, me? Thank you both for all that you've done. I'm sure we'll meet again someday. Isn't that right? Edgeworth. Edgeworth.
stop hiding and come over here. Why is he so angry? Where was he hiding? I just came to say... Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth! Yo, we are done with this mess, babe! Right? Well, I'll be going now. Mr. Edgeworth, I hope you don't blame yourself for what happened. We were the ones who acted corruptly, not you. It's too late for me. No matter what anyone may say, I realize today that I can't correct my mistakes. Mr. Edgeworth! Not only that, um, but I don't even trust myself anymore. Chief Gant was right. You despise criminals, you yeah, you're mean, you're just alike, blah 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 blah. We don't need to see that again. Edgy does need a hug. I do despise criminals. I plan to dis dedicate my entire life to fighting them. But in order to fight crime on my own, I'd need a weapon. It's scary, but I've known that, to be true, for quite some time, I'll need to become Batman. But Edgeworth! Who knows? Given enough time, I might even find a Robin. I may have tried to pull something like Chief Kent did. <sighs> that thought terrifies me. That's why I can't continue as a prosecutor. Only a bat in a cave with a Robin and a butler. Edgeworth, don't you understand? Damon Gant and your mentor, Manfred von Karma, were both the best of the best when it came to fighting crime. But they both made the same mistake. You said in order to fight crime on your own, you'd need a weapon. That may be true, but think back to today's trial. You weren't alone. You were working together with Mr. Wright, and because of that partnership, you were able to present evidence that otherwise would have gone undiscovered. Isn't that right, Mr. Wright? Huh? What? Oh, y yeah. What is this, a pop quiz? Come on, Mr. Wright! Show them what Lana is talking about! Evidence, huh? Something that neither Edgeworth nor I would have been able- Oh yeah, that's the, uh, list. That's the picture I drew! Our counterattack began with this. You had one half of the evidence list and I had the other. Apart, we wouldn't have been able to completely restore Emma's picture. That didn't just happen by chance, Mr. Edgeworth. Is this gonna take a whole other episode? God damn it! It's time for me to go. Mr. Edgeworth! If you'll excuse me, there are still some loose ends that need wrapping up. Take care, Chief Prosecutor. Edgeworth, what will you do now? Well, whatever you do, just remember, you can let what happened kill the prosec. You can let what happened happened kill the prosecutor in you, or you can let it help you grow. In the end, it's up to you. I know. It seems I owe you my thanks too, right? But what I face now is my problem. Edgeworth, I'll be waiting for you to co in court. Farewell. Oh, he'll be back, I'm sure. I think, I hope. I'd better be going too. Okay, but I'll be by to visit soon. It seems we both have a lot to learn and catching up to do. Here, this is a little something for you. A scientific investigation. 
It's the first book I ever bought. Study it well. Thanks, sis. I will. Aww. It's so cute! And so, another case came to a close. As for the sisters, I have faith. Aww, so cute! Faith that their lives have only just begun. And as for me, I think it's time I started on a new journey of my own. A journey to rediscover myself. Oh, uh, well, don't go check it off just yet, pal. Huh? What is it, detective? There's just a little matter to be resolved about the chief prosecutor. You see, she, she isn't supposed to be out of jail like this. But... I thought you said it was okay. Yeah, well, it may be okay with me, but the folks at the prison are a different story. Huh? Basically, I had to bribe a guard in order to sneak her out for 30 minutes. Believe me, it wasn't cheap either. Huh? Way to go, detective. I didn't know you had a wild side. Oh, well, <laughs> you see? Mr. Right here is the one who's, uh, who'll be footing the bill. Huh? Huh? Uh, what, you think I could afford it with my salary? You gotta be kidding me, pal. Huh? Thank you, Mr. Wright. You're the best! Shake my damn head, gumshoe. Yeah, 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 shaking it again. Just shaking it again. Why is it... I suddenly feel like I want to scream. Oh, because you do, Phoenix. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we all go pay it off together? <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea. Come on, guys. Let's go. <laughs> oh, we did it. It is over. Oh, my God. That was the ending of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. The first game in the trilogy. I arranged for a friend of mine in your... Yeah, I hope she'll be pleased to study under a top coroner. As for me, this affair has pretty much ended my days at the prosecutor's office. Still, I'll manage to be fine some way back in the field somehow. Then I'll be able to investigate crimes together with Emma. Oh, God. Oh, this is so cool. Like... What do we do now? Yikes, I thought I was a uh, goner for a moment there in the end, though. They overlooked my unauthorized investigation to the chief's office. If we penalized any more, I'll be worse than firing you. Yeah, that's what they said. It just goes to show you can't shake me off that easily. Shut up, gumshoe. Go away. <laughs> oh god, this was a long, long freaking case. A long game at that. But we got it done, people. And it is it is oh it feels nice to see these cur oh fuck you guy! No, no, I'm not even reading your shit. I hate you. You are fucking stupid. should be hit by a bus twice. Oh, uh, if I'm up, definitely, Dragon, I'll stop by. Oh, it is a very good game. I, I actually really like this game. And I'm, at, I'm actually really glad I was able to play it for all of you. Blue Badger. It's all his fault. <laughs> uh, Dragon Stream's pretty late. <laughs> oh, it died! Nice. Fuck the Blue Badger. <laughs> Programming. Fumaki Sato. Oh... Let's just get through this, and who should we, uh, raid, boo? 
Definitely gotta pick somebody. Somebody good. Let's see who I got on my list here. We can do Dick Cahoon, Titsy, Zombie Pirate Ninja, Drag, Tofu the Survivor, Groovy Fox, Hmm. Poor ZPN is playing VR five days. Oh, God. You see it when my busy change to streaming on Discord. Alright, I'll keep an eye out when you, uh, when you go live, Dragon. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for everybody, actually, for uh, coming out and hanging out while we uh, play this, this very long, long case. But uh, who should we go? Who should we go to, uh, Jen? Oh, Five Nights at Freddy's in VR has to be freaking horrible. Scary shit. Oh, I don't blame you for getting spooked, believe me. Maya! Ah! Nothing soothes the soul like fresh country air. Still, sometimes I do miss hearing you and your objection. Still, I can't I can't go back until I become a full-fledged spirit. It's like my afternoon training is about to begin. Coming! Well, see you around, Nick. We got to see Maya, baby! <laughs> Alright. I say we go ahead over to... Does this ever end? Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, uh, Mr. Edgeworth. I wrote you your tea. What? What's going on? Why are you showing a bellboy? Oh, nice, dude. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Thanks for coming to see me off. I can't believe I'm going to Europe. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Thank you so much for everything. I'm a little sad. Whenever I want to see Lana, all I have to do is open this book. Aww. Oh? Aw, it's, it's Lana and uh, Emma when she was little. It's so cute! Yeah, that was the, that was the bus boy from the Barbie case. Oh, we finally did it! Trophy earned! Rise from the ashes! Oh god. This was a long case, people. And you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and say uh, thank you for all coming out and actually being through all of this with me. You guys have been amazing. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and, uh, and raid somebody. And Zombie's got 19 people going for him. And Groovy Fox got 14. I say we go ahead and raid Titsy, who's uh, playing Dragon's Dogma. So uh, we're going to go ahead and raid him. 
and I'll see you guys over there as I shut this down. So, uh, you know, give him my love and all that nifty jazz. But, uh, he has a raid. Uh, so, uh, later, people. I will see you guys in the next one.